Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. Bam. All right, uh, welcome, Sim Captains. This is uh, Flight Bro Tim here, and... Of course, I'm Flight Bro Lee. We're hanging out today on a Sunday, as we have in the past. Right, and so uh, the, the question of the day was, where should we go and what should we fly? And uh, the one in the back, the uh, the Baron's probably the more appropriate choice for today's trip. Oh, hey, look, Squirrel, uh, our engine is finally preheated on the Cessna. Hmm. Apparently it's good to go at about 44 degrees. So this is the SimCoders Reality Expansion Pack version of the Cessna 172. You've seen it in a couple of our videos. Lee's mm -hmm. got videos specifically about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, We may want to leave that running since we're probably going to be talking for a minute just to warm it up a little more. Yeah. All right. It's not hurting anything. We'll leave it on there. Yeah, it's free. It's free. Well, that, that's true. It is. Price is right. It is free. I'm, I'm like a battery charge if you're using the Reality Expansion Pack. So... Oh, really? Yeah, you got to pay for that. Yeah, I was going to start my reality expansion pack today, but then... Uh, economy. Economy, economy. I'm sorry. The the SimCoders economy with this, and I was just having some issues getting it to accept my uh, serial number. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But of all the things we could fly today, if you've ever seen the list of aircraft, we should look at it because we can. Okay. Like... These were the choices, and as Lee and I sat around going, where should we go and what should we fly? Mm -hmm. You might be wondering, why did we end up picking a little old Cessna 172? Functionally a de default plane with a modified file. Right, this would be like going to a car show, saying, hey, take the keys, go for a spin and anything you want, and then walking out back and grabbing someone's... You know, what a Hyundai Elantra maybe, <laughs> yeah. or a, <laughs> the used just, Elantra. No, let's upgrade it. Maybe like a used Civic or used Corolla or something. Right. Yeah. Um, so the reason we're doing this today is because, quite honestly, as much fun as it is to fly these heavy metals, you know what would happen? We'd is spend that, an hour pr planning. Okay. Thirty minutes pre-flighting, we get it up, and then we'd sit here and go like, well. What are we going to do? Because the FMC is going to handle the rest of the trip until it's landing time. True, yeah. So this way we actually get to fly. and uh, Quite honestly, with the last uh, two videos, as of now, the, the most recent two videos that have dropped, um, we don't know what you guys watch and why, to be totally honest. Yeah, there is that. So, uh, you know, as... Definitely Zebo, but... Yeah, this is true. We, we've noticed, and we've tried not to exploit it. Actually, we definitely haven't, because we almost never make you guys uh, Zebo videos. Um, but if we put Zebo on any video, actually, I bet you, even if we tag this video when we eventually release it as being Zebo something, it will get more views, because everybody loves themselves some Zebo footage. And uh, we get it. It's free, and it's incredibly detailed, but um, believe it or not... I don't know. Can I say this is more fun? Is that is that allowed? Well, that and we don't know from analyzing. Can you say analyzing the analytics from our video analytics? What people watch and why? Um, historically, general aviation seems to be lower view numbers, lower. I wouldn't say necessarily lower watch time per video. Well, right. So, that, so this week was a good example of that. Lee put out what was the video? The uh, V Flight Air Cherokee, Cherokee. One Hundred and Forty Modern. I think about a week ago. All right, and that's pretty comparable to the Cessna. It's a basic trainer, sure. light, general aviation, and then great aircraft, by the way. Absolutely, I, I still, I, I actually kind of want to buy it. Um, about you a week should. later, I put out uh, uh, yesterday, incidentally, Dom Henry's English Electric Lightning, mm -hmm. and uh, I had hit Lee's Cherokee view count within what one day, and so. It's just yeah. a funny thing that, like, if it's general aviation, and I told Lee it's the vegetables of flying, that, um, not that there's anything wrong with it, it's actually the best flying, I think, it's just that it doesn't have the curb appeal. So, 
I figure before we get going, because we always have to talk a lot, because that's how it is when I'm around. Uh, yeah, well, maybe people, maybe that's it. Maybe they like you better. They want to hear my talking. Yeah, they want to hear your voice. Well, you know, they just come hang out here. You got to hear my voice all day around here. <laughs> but, uh, so why general deviation? I fear we should just kind of ramble about that for a moment and what makes this so much fun. I think, uh, I don't know, I mean, what, what do you enjoy about general aviation that you don't get with an airliner per se. What, what works for you here? Um, and put on your seatbelt because that's list number one. Yeah, well, in a way, um, I feel like you actually, if you want to do, especially a point A to point B, you have to do a little more flight planning depending on where you are in the world or the country or whatever. Because right. weather, you can't escape through weather uh, like you can in a, uh, in a transport category aircraft. So... You know, icing's a real thing. You know, freezing levels. Um, a 60 knot headwind halves your ground speed or increases at 50%. Right. Um, okay. So we're just a lot more vulnerable in these little uh, tiny planes. Right. Yeah. You know, I can't out climb a uh, thunderstorm with tops at 30,000 feet, which, <laughs> you know, and I don't have radar to navigate around it. You can barely out climb 3,000 feet. But, and... <laughs> right. Yeah. I can barely climb at all. Uh, speaking of that, well, actually, before we get sidetracked onto that, uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I guess there's a couple of things that I dig on this. First off, Cause this, cause this you, is, uh, if I may interrupt real quick, you didn't used to be a big fan of the general aviation. All right, this, I got to fess up because we, we had this conversation in my kitchen while we were requesting for a soda earlier. Um, I was pointing out to Lee when I first got this PC and then found the Zebo. So I'm not knocking you guys because I'm one of you. I spent a solid year doing nothing but Zebo. I what did I rack up four or five hundred hours? Yeah, I think you're around four hundred. Yeah. And this is not five hundred hours of hey I uh I I set it to fly a nine hour flight and left the room. No, like I was there for these hours. Well, it was virtual airline, so we were flying real routes. Right, and I uh, I typically did them after work, and I usually did anywhere from a one to a three hour leg because that's what I had time for. Sure. I uh, wish I had that time again. I have, like, no time these days. Yeah, yeah. So, um, one of the things that's great about this, this is the only aircraft I've actually flown for real in my life. Uh, I've been up in the Cessna twice, which I know is really not an impressive number at all. But, um, it's better than zero. Yeah, it is better than zero. But having flown it once and ridden it another time... The feel, like, how would I put it? In your mind, you can translate that experience into what you're doing here. Sure. And so that instantly makes it cooler. Even stupid things like uh, the sound and the door. Although the funny thing is... You gotta go lower down, I think. Maybe this is to help <clears throat> simulate the fact that in real life you'd probably need to slam it a little more. I was gonna say there's that meme where... Uh, the it's double me slam. The, yeah, it's me or the Cessna. He slammed the door twice, twice. and took off or whatever. Yeah, uh, it's no joke. Uh, the, the the Cessna doors, particularly if it's an old like rinky flight school, right? yeah. <laughs> if it's been driven hard and put away wet since 1975, yeah, the, the doors out. might be a little uh, little wonky. Too too many hard landings. Sure. But uh, I guess the other thing is, all right. So if we do a two hour hop in the Zebo. We're going to spend an hour on the ground, not with me BSing, but just setting up the FMC, running all the procedures, checking everything, pulling maps and charts. And what, we're going to actually fly the aircraft, what, five minutes? I mean, it depends how quick you want to hit those uh, yeah, those uh, autopilot features. You could, I guess, fly it the whole way up to climb. One of our friends is a... Uh, uh, 737 NG captain and he tells me he frequently flies it by hand up to uh, top of climb just to kind of stay in stay in practice with the uh, aircraft since most of the time you're not getting that much stick time on it but I guess so we're, we're hoping gentlemen and uh, and ladies we do have a few female viewers that as you're out there flying your Zebo that you will you know Make the leap one day, turn on X-Plane, and grab the Cessna. If you're not sure how to fly it, go watch some of our videos. We have tutorials. 
Well, and or, take or it even, uh, for a spin. Or, or even just any default, something different. If you fly conventional, say you fly Cessna all the time, grab that what is the Stinson tail dragger. Oh, that's go, a blast. Yeah, go go pound the pattern a couple times. That's Hop a blast. in the, the Cirrus um, default. Just try something different than what you normally do. And um, don't be afraid of low and slow. Like As much as you might think, oh, this is so lame, I'm only doing 100 knots. Uh, if you have some good ortho, we're actually just a little bit to the east of the Grand Canyon here. And uh, I was just joking with Lee when we were doing our sound check. It looks like the Flintstones out here. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot more to see. When you're at cruise, we're gonna, we, we always have to rag on you cloud people. So here it comes. Yeah. It's no shock that people are like, well, I need better clouds, because there's nothing else to see at 35,000 feet. But if you're at 3,500 feet, there's a lot of things to see. Yeah, and, and uh, at the higher cruise level, sometimes, depending on your ortho zoom level, uh, it really might just be costing you more space on your hard drive. Yeah, it's kind of irrelevant up at that uh, altitude, unless you have, uh, it does seem to help for mountains. Sure, sure, sure. But, but uh, you know, if we're flying a uh, Southwest Airlines flight from St. Louis to, I don't know, Topeka or Kansas City, it's probably largely irrelevant. Right, right. But, uh, okay, so but while, we're, while we're going on about this, where are we actually going today? How did you get here? And should we tell them what we're actually trying to do? All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's pull up the map. Okay. This is what we're looking at. We are currently at. If you know how to say this, guys, and I say it wrong, feel free to uh, leave that in the comments. Cayenta. Sure, I'll buy it. That's uh, we're gonna stick with that. We probably should have opened the video with this overview of what we're doing, by the way, instead of blabbering. Well, it, well let's uh, well let's bring everybody up to speed with where okay. we are here. So here is <clears throat> the United States of America. And we are in Arizona at the northern corner, as it were. And this is the Grand Canyon right here in that blue. It's a somewhat restricted area. There's rules. There's actually a couple of paths. You can see this blue here, and they have a special chart for that. But we're just outside of that area. Okay, I lost the magenta line. Here we go. Here we go. Up here. So the... Uh, scenery you are seeing is this higher ground off to our west and then there's some little peaks up here that were sticking out there's some ruins there in the navajo national monument nice i wonder if that shows up in the ortho or if it's too flat to see i don't know more importantly there's a trading post up here we can go and it's not trader joe's <laughs> isn't that a trading post or marketed as such i was just amused to see it on the chart because like, is, it, is this something that's so big that it's useful for aerial navigation? Or there's just nothing at all in the area, so this one structure is obvious. You know what? That's probably it. You have a trading post next to a school and a with camp. a camp. So that is your visual reference where this road 163 intersects. Interesting. Uh, real quick, I'm not familiar with this. Um... I think it's a, is that a private? I think it's a private, like unpaved or something like that. Or would that indicate maybe a closed or, airport? Yeah, or closed. I'd have to like, consult here's that. Because, like, here's this R. That's uh, restricted. Restricted. Oh, yeah, so that's got private on it. So maybe that's an abandoned or a closed. Now I have on our way out. I kind of want to fly over and see what that is. I'm very curious. If it wasn't a 20 or 30 minute deviation. Oh, that's right. We're in a Cessna. <laughs> Oops. Things to keep in mind. Yeah. It takes a while, but you'll get there. Okay, so, so anyway. Uh, if you if you hadn't already looked up there, guys, we're looking at Telluride, which is obviously not in Arizona. Right. This is in Colorado for you unfamiliar with the geography. And it is a very high altitude airport, as you can see there at, um, what is it, 9070. So yeah. 9,000 feet MSL. Uh, and we're talking to come in to go out to this uh, VOR cones. Um, is that its ETL? ETL, yeah. That's weird. All right. So uh, that actually clears it up so you can see it a little better. We do have a video on how to read these charts. I'm just going to plug that because I made it. And yeah, you did. Practically nobody watches it. So That's okay. Humor me. Go watch it, guys. This 9070 is the altitude. Uh, AWOS, that's kind of like ATIS, but it's an automated weather system. Observation system. There we go. Thank you. Uh, you're going to tune it up at 118.325. We have some field lighting, the asterisk, 
I don't. I need to go watch my video to remember I don't exactly. Remember. Runway, um, runway length. Probably means it's off at night or something like that. Or, or it might be the microphone activated. The and uh, clicks. and there's also something to tell you if it has the airport beacon. Mm, the the yeah. green, uh, green and white alternating. Mm -hmm. Uh, common traffic advisory. Is that what this is? One two three dot zero. Yeah, the, you forgot the runway length. Right? Oh, uh, the seven one is the runway length. You just add the zeros yourself. Seven thousand one hundred feet, mm -hmm. which is pretty generous for a small airport. But considering the altitude, it's probably barely going to be enough. Mm -hmm. And then we have a right hand pattern on runway nine. Runway nine is obviously ninety degrees, which is going this way. And if you just look at all this delightful terrain, it's obvious why you can't have a left-hand pattern into the mountains. And to look at some of the peaks on here where the black dots are, like and we're talking, head. yeah, we're, we're looking at 14.5, 14.6, over 14,000 feet. Uh, I think the Cessna's maximum height is right around there. Um, so one of the things to consider and, and one of the challenges with this flight is going to be Maybe not necessarily whether the aircraft can get in there. We think it can get in there. Mm -hmm. It might, excuse me, be difficult getting out, but also at that altitude with a relatively small displacement, naturally aspirated engine, power is a big deal. So we just figured we'd uh, we'd take it take the Cessna in there. So this is literally how the conversation started with Lee. Uh, we're, you know, where are we going to fly? What are we going to fly? We wanted to use GA because we just why not? We just like the GA stuff. And the more we fly, the more I want to fly the small stuff. Right today, we wanted to fly that. And uh, so I threw this idea to Lee because um, oh, I didn't mention this. So when we're not making videos, I've been puttering around with this Cessna. I need to turn off that walk around thing. As though it was my own private plane, which I know is really corny, but you guys are flight sim geeks, so you feel my pain. I don't own a plane, and I don't have a private license, so I just kind of pretend this is mine, and I uh, fly it places, and just for realism's sake, I don't just teleport it to new airports. I go and pick it up wherever I left it. So since I left it up here in northern Arizona, I was like, well, where can we go from here? And I said, Lee, you think we can get this into Telluride? Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole, well, the altitude and the performance and what about the weather and... Uh, All very real things to consider in the real world. Right. And so that's why, again, you could just jump into your Zebo and get a sim brief. And unless there's literally a hurricane coming in, you would know you can get there. And worst comes to worst, if you know how to program the ILS, it can even put you on the ground all by itself. Sure. That's not a given here. Like we need to know that we can get in here, and uh, we don't actually have the performance or the oxygen tanks to outclimb any of the surrounding terrain at right. all. Like can't be done. So uh, for us, this is going to be a one way in. We're going to come in over this uh, road mm -hmm. down this valley, and if there's a problem, then we've got to get turned around inside this bowl. And sure. then back out because, uh, you know, we're blocked in completely here. This is all high ground, high ground. It might be a little bit of a pass out here to the south, but that doesn't look any better than the way we came in. Right. And most of the traffic into Telluride is biz jets, turboprops, that kind of stuff. So um, I don't know if Telluride even has a webcam. You guys can Google it and look. But I doubt you're going to see many Cessna 172s sitting up on the ramp. And we can see right now there's some snow in the area. So <laughs> that was just so perfect. I'm glad you said it because uh, we can see it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, um, we're not going to get to see the snow because X Plane doesn't know how to do that. But yeah, yeah. You know, there's always there's always the future. So so while we're at it, the uh, the current METAR on file there, as you guys can see, at KTEX is uh, 274, 10 miles clear. Uh, a little chilly, but nothing to. Um, that's going to keep us away. Now, if we look here down at this terminal area forecast, we can see we're going to have a visibility of six miles and an overcast at 2,000. Okay, let's look at the time. That They're anticipating that at about 5.30 and... Uh, or wait, hold on. Am I reading this wrong? Yeah, it's date and then time Zulu. So the 19th. So 19th of today, which would be now. And then 5.26 Zulu. Zulu, yeah. And the current is today at... Sorry. How can the current be... It's 2230 right now. How come the current is after the 
terminal forecast. The METAR comes out at certain intervals. So that is when that METAR was cut. When that observation or whatever was made, it was at 2215. Okay. So in theory, we wouldn't expect another one until 2315 or so. But is this uh, terminal area forecast, is this when they're expecting the weather or this is just what it should change to and this is when they made the prediction? Yeah, they're kind of expecting that. But then if you look at the next... Uh, if you look at the next thing, uh, you got the the nineteenth. I think was it nineteenth and twentieth. If I if I'm reading that correct, that part okay. I'm a little unsure about. But I think that starts to give you a forecasted weather. The next okay. one there is from nineteenth at twenty one hundred. Oh, okay. they're expecting. Oh, okay, two six zero at six. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, gentlemen, if if you don't know how to read it raw, click this button. Oh yeah, we could have done that. But, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but Such is the value of learning. But really, isn't it more fun to know how to do it for real? So let's let's just very briefly, because we're obviously in no hurry to do anything right here. Sure, and probably no one's watching this, no click fast forward. All right. K Tex is um tell you right's iCal code, the four letter. Yep. The nineteenth is the date. Today's January nineteenth. Uh, military time, 2215, and Zulu. So that's your, your Greenwich Mean Time. That is not the local time there. Yep. Uh, Autom it? Automated observation, if you remember, it had an AWOS. Okay. AWOS. So this was not generated by a human being, but by weather observation systems yeah. on site yeah, that automatically pop it out. Right, and if they have uh, National Weather Service personnel that are qualified, they can actually go in and make amendments oh. to correct it if something is off or changing or of importance. I did not know that. That's why we have Lee here for the technical stuff. So uh, 27004 is the direction of the wind. From, the wind is coming at us from the direction 270. It is not blowing 270. It is coming from 270, right? Yes. And um, it's at four knots. Mm-hmm. Which in some locations, I think Russia's one of them, it'll show you in meters per second. Oh. Which, good luck on that. I, yeah. I don't even know that one. Uh, so then we've got uh, 10 statute miles. Is that what that SM yeah, means? Vis yeah, visibility. Now, is that 10 plus, like 10 or more? Does this thing cap out at 10? Yeah, pretty much you're not going to see anything over 10. Okay, so in theory, the visibility could be higher than 10. Just wanted you to right. know that, like... Oh, look, it's always 10. What a coincidence. No, it's just anything beyond 10, it's not uh, calculated. And if you'll recall, like for VFR, I think it's uh, is it three miles lateral visibility, clear of clouds, meaning you can't fly through clouds, and then at least a, a base of 3,000 feet. All right. So that's the rules for VFR. Anything less than that, you have to be a IFR qualified. All right. Nice. I mean, I knew those restrictions were out there, but I haven't read them often enough to remember what they are. Um, I think even bat sim sometimes simulate that. You'll be like, oh, I'm trying to fly VFR from here. If you didn't look at the weather, I think the controllers will actually reject you and go, uh, you need to be on an instrument flight plan. Mm, all right. Which, fortunately, getting your instrument rating in uh, bat sim it's Does cheaper than the real world. <laughs> it's not as big of a leap. Yeah, right. Yeah, I can just go, okay, I have our clearance then. All right. So it's clear. We have no uh, reported cloud cover to deal with. Yeah. Uh, what's this O2 slash M10? That is uh, temperature and dew point. Oh, okay. What's the M Temperature then? 2 in Celsius. Uh, and the dew point. Dew point's oh, minus 10. 10. M is for minus. All right. Our altimeter setting in, um, this is what? Uh, inches? That, uh, altimeter, yeah, in, in inches. That's a pretty high one, 3041. Right, yeah, and considering the altitude that we're up at, at too, that's something that kind of makes it even higher. Uh, what's this remark, AO2? I think that's uh, automated observation. Oh, okay. So, again, you can click this, but, you know, once you get used to how to read these at a glance, it's probably actually faster to read it in the raw than to do it that way. So... Uh, you can see actually just looking out here from, uh, what's the name of this airport again? I keep forgetting. I don't remember. You wrote it down. That's so very important that none of us can remember where we are. It's kind of a place on a map and we're going to another place on a map. Cayenta, Cayenta, Cayenta. Okay, so at Cayenta, it uh, looks like it's unlimited visibility. And we're going to need to put in here the, um, we need to find the wind, although... 
hold on. That's what this guy is for. I bet I bet our Zebo friends have never looked at the windsock. So Okay, let's look at how it's orientated to the uh, That's what I was just trying to figure out what, what direction am I looking. We are looking, I believe. So there's us, there's the runway heading. So we are looking pretty much to the east. It looks like it's flopped down at a you know, pointing north and I don't see any movement. Well, it's a little yeah bounce there and i think a lot of these if they're uh fully out i think are typically 15 knot socks i was gonna say isn't and each each, each section, stripe yeah. uh a different speed of yeah. wind yeah i believe that's correct or it might be a 20 knot sock and each one's five knots oh that makes sense 5 10 15 20 25 weren't we showing uh at least up there provided the weather is the same like six knots so it'd be a little more than one segment so uh, just to see if we have anything to dial up here, we have an AWOS here at 119325. And we'll pull that up in a moment. I mean, we could just read the weather off there, but that's no fun. 119.325. Okay, so in the, uh, the planning aspect, we only have one waypoint to hit. We do have some VORs we can reference on the way up. <clears throat> did we want to? Did we want to fly up kind of like to that Dove Creek and then come in on that uh, Victor sixty eight? Yeah, let's add that then, uh, because I don't know that we can pick up uh, cones right from this. We're one hundred twenty three nautical miles. We can probably get it from out here, but let's do Dove Creek anyway. It'll be more uh, actually. That probably helps to bring you around this. Yeah, we'll clear some of that We've got higher. some uh, some high altitude. Here's the weird thing. This is such a, a high area that, you know, you're going to look like we're flying 3,000 feet above ground level, and you're actually at 9,000 feet uh, MSL. So sure. it's just interesting. So it's a little deceptive that you look out and you're like, what, we're not very high at all. And then you look at the uh, altimeter, it's like, oh, actually we are. All right, so our flight plan is currently for 142, just about 145 miles, we'll round it up. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, 143. I don't know why I rounded it up by like <laughs> three miles. Oh, that's okay. I wasn't listening, actually. I was writing something down here. Sorry, right. Lee's just tuning me out. He's used to it because I never shut up. Um, Somebody gave me a peach mango pie. A peach mango pie has been delivered to the cockpit of our aircraft. Yeah, I don't know that I really want that right now. Peach, man peach mango sounds more like a, a Telluride uh, treat. I, I do, guess. Do you think you can get a peach mango pie in Telluride? Uh, sure. All right. <laughs> no, I do. Me either. Hey, how long are we... Do we have a recording time on this thing? Do you know how long we've been going on? How right long have we been jabbering? Yeah, uh, we, it's typically 20 to 30 minutes. We may want to start firing her up. Yeah, let's let's get going. But I need to know how much gas to put in it. That's why I'm... No, all the gas. Stuff. Actually, no, just kidding. Um, We're going to be up for about an hour and a half if nothing happens. I fly around 10 gallons an hour. And... Uh, I think it's about 10 gallons at about 2200 RPM, which is like 60%. I think she's actually more like 7 but. Right, because we don't want to. That's another thing, guys. We don't want to carry too much fuel in uh, because of the high altitude and, and right. weight. All right, are you bringing? How much does that pie weigh? Um, I don't know. I'd I'm say gonna, less than a pound, but let's round up. I'm, I'm going to give it one pound. That's going to be in the rear seat. Um, I'm not going to ask your weight, but I'm, I'm going to call you 150 today. Okay, that's. Uh, I'd go 165. All right, actually. I was going to say, you can't be 126. That's, yeah, I, that's like a child. <laughs> 226 is, you're, you're lighter than that. Let's put it this way, guys. I'm I'm not going to cost you in fuel burn to take along on the trip. Uh, all right, so fuel flow. Okay, it says cruise fuel 6.87 is their estimated. I, we should be a little more conservative. You want to call it 8, 9? I, I don't know. Can we change I, this number? Yeah, double click, highlight all of it. It doesn't want to let me. Okay. I'm just call it nine. Okay. Flight um, time. Flight time, yeah. And we were looking what at what? 122. 123. So 60, 83. You this might want to fudge that. Yeah. 
90 minutes. And real quick, it, should we get up here and decide we're bugging out? Where are we bugging out to? Double the fuel. You want to double? Well, we're not coming the whole way back. Well, no, but... Hopkins? Sure. I mean, I didn't see any weather in the area. Here, if we look at this, there's uh, Hopkins. It's Okay. I, I just wrote Hopkins as an alternate. No uh, wind. No wind. Clear. 10 miles clear. That visibility looks good. So, give us a good alternate. It's uh, you know, if we had like some approaching weather or a chance that something was going to happen, then we'd want to look and see. Okay, could we go here? And if that's too close, that like a storm front could envelop both of them, then we'd look at coming back farther, or we just wouldn't be going. But uh, I think Hopkins will be fine. And you know, an interesting thing too about this is I think unless you're the hardcore sim guys, mm -hmm. this is probably going to be either skipped or that people don't look at. I think the average flight simmer doesn't really care or maybe doesn't think about this. Okay. Maybe they don't know it's a thing. Let's put it this way. I know it's a thing, but when Lee's not here to keep me honest, I'm just like, let's turn on the plane and go. And uh, mm -hmm. so there's a part of me every time I end the video with plan the flight and fly the plan that feels a little guilty. <laughs> Because I know so very often I don't, but it, it is a sim, so sure. I can get away with it, but that's a habit that cannot be carried into the real world. Okay, I put us at uh, 115 minutes. Okay. Rick is an extra, because it is a slow aircraft, so sure. if we're turning back, maybe we want longer. Well, and plus, if, if weather changes and we do get a headwind as we come back out, it's, it's flight time, right? Right. Uh, CG looks good. Nothing, nothing to report there. Super. No no baggage is coming along. Right. The baggage actually just went to the mall, according to this note in my lap. <laughs> uh, this Yes, this will be one of our videos where you won't most likely hear children because uh, we've managed to uh, to send them elsewhere today. They're, they actually sent themselves elsewhere. We didn't send them out. Yeah, that paints a, a bad picture. Yeah, it's not like we kicked them out of the house so we could flight sim. Um Although I don't know if we could even have... I don't even know if we could get away with that. You think we? No, I don't think so. I don't think we can get away with that. Those Did of you who are married will kids, understand the, the pain. I don't know. I'm we gonna go check on that. I'll, I'll be right back. We're gonna uh, find out if we have little viewers. passengers or not. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna turn off this preheat. We're up to 52 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. I think that's good. Sure. So we're gonna shut down the preheat. Um, the walk around. I'm gonna kind of skip because it is a sim and. We've taken a lot more time than we normally would here. So let's start running the list. Uh, Seatbelt and shoulder harness. Um, there's not one on my office chair, but if there was, I'd be wearing it. The brakes, they're disengaged. That's interesting. I didn't, that's really interesting. I don't know how they got turned off. Okay, fuel selector is set to both. That's excellent. Fuel shutoff valve is in. Correct. Circuit breakers are all in. Those aren't simulated. Anyway, avionics is off and the master switch is off. All right, throttle. Open it about a quarter of an inch. Mixture to idle cutoff. Engine is not cold anymore, so I'm not going to run that auxiliary pump. Uh, mixture rich until three point. Oh, we're, we're skipping that, right? Propeller area. Clear. Should we should we yell? Do these windows open? Uh, I don't think they do. The doors do, but I don't think the windows do. Should we open the door? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. You Clear. Angle of, the, angle of attack style. That's as bad as I can do it. All right. Sorry, I may have trailed some of that in. We'll cut that from the video. All right. Propeller area is clear and starter engaged. You know what? The battery's off. That's probably not going to work, is it? Uh, that's true. Yep, you gotta hook that back up. Sweet. What did I miss? How'd you prime it? Did you hook the battery up? Uh... I think it is, because right, that wouldn't be happening at all if it wasn't. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Engine one is flooded. You know... Okay, flooded, so that's uh, mixed, <sighs> uh, mixed lean, throttle open, when it starts, bring it back. And then bring it back to uh, 
Okay, there you go. A good low power setting. You know, I've done that to this thing so many times. Yeah. I don't want to say every time, but it might be every time. Do you have difficulty starting it? Uh, I know you've mentioned that, yeah. actually. Oh. I, can I mention how stupid that makes me feel that I have trouble starting Assassin's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do we want to just hit the running clock so that we know how much this thing's, uh, uh ET? ET, elapsed yeah. time. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay. Clock is running, sir. All right. We're, Engine. We're by the minute. 1,000 RPM to warm yeah, her and, up. Yeah, and, and, uh, obviously we had to use the preheater, so it's very cold, so, you know, we want to warm that up. And I skipped the whole priming thing. I thought because we used the preheater, we'd be good. Maybe that's why I had trouble starting. All right, uh, oil pressure. Yeah, it's actually kind of more important when it's cold. Oh, sorry, guys. Once again, Tim has no idea what he's doing. All right, oil pressure is in the green. Green. Mixture leaned max. Uh, haven't done that, should we? Yeah. Save us some pennies. All right, what are we watching for that uh, EGT? Nothing, really. You just want to lead it out until it... Uh, sputters? Yeah, until it sputters. You're just not wasting gas while you're sitting here on the ground. There you go. I think we're good there. Okay. All right. Uh, mixtures lean. Flaps are up. up yeah. Avionics. On. Bam. Instrument set. Well, sir, I believe it's time I gave you something to do. All right. Uh, what do we want? Uh, well, let's get ready to put in this plan. Give me one second, though. I'm just going to yeah. scratch down what these uh, I are. I can pull up the VORs. I already wrote them down. Oh, well, while you, you were jibber jabbering over there about something, stop knocking my blab and I like it. All right, yeah. uh, what's do what's, me do me a favor. This? Yeah. If you want to do the flight plan, but okay. first let me. I'm gonna grab this while you do that. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. You can Wind one five zero at five. Visibility more than ten. Sky clear. Temperature four. Dew point minus eight. Altimeter three zero four six. Is it one five zero at five? I don't know. Honestly, yeah, because the, the stock was pointing north, and it looked like we had what one, uh, one stripe up. Yeah, one stripe was up. So there we go. The wind sock works. Uh, um, you didn't put in DVC, did you? No, I'm actually. I was trying to find the. Just do this. The uh, menu and clear. Delete flight plan. Yeah. And then enter. Okay. There we go. All right. So now I can get to what I was trying to do here. Yeah. Delta Victor Charlie. Okay. This Just set, uh, roll it a little slower because it has like a max uh, speed. Oh, gotcha. Works. Yep. You know, I guess one of the other awesome things for um, for doing these little GA flights, maybe tell you right is a bit of a joke, but a lot of these little flights around Arizona that I do with the Cessna are things that can theoretically be done. You're talking about in the real world going from... Like, it's not improbable that within a few years we might find some time and money, get uh, private pilot's licenses, and these could be actual flights that are done. Oh, yeah, for sure. Whereas if I say, let's grab a 744 and fly it to Manila, there is no way in our lifetime that you and I will find ourselves uh, piloting a 744 into Manila. It, it is right. literally never going to happen. Sure, sure. Um, one of the... Uh, one of my... Uh I guess coworkers or peers at work, he has um, he's building time for his instrument rating, and he got his tail dragger, and they flew to um, over to San Diego and then up to the L.A. area, oh, nice. and then back with his instructor, you know, for some uh, hood time. So I mean, even that over the course of a weekend is not unreasonable. That sounds beautiful right now. You know, one of the interesting things is uh. If our viewers have never been to the Phoenix area, the uh, just the way our weather is and how relatively flat the Phoenix area is, we're surrounded by mountains, but uh, the valley that is Phoenix is quite flat for 
I don't know, 60, 80 miles uh, east-west. And so we get these incredible sunrises and sunsets. And I always think to myself when I'm out there and seeing an amazing sunrise and sunset, man, I wish I was up in a Cessna right now just to just to see this whole thing from above. Yeah, this place Gorgeous. definitely does. Uh, it does sunsets. Did you see it like two nights ago where we had a little cloud cover and you got the pink and orange? And mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was pretty nice. Pretty much, let's put it this way. If there is a cloud in Phoenix... At sunrise or sunset, you are going to get an amazing show. Sure. Hands yeah, down. Yeah. It's going to happen every time. All right there, Captain. So I've got our GPS flight plan loaded. <clears throat> uh, if you want to double check that, I've got uh, Dove Creek set on our VOR1, and I've got uh, ETL as our alternate All right, um, on the standby. We had a question in one of our videos this week. Somebody couldn't get the uh, turbo let to track their flight plan and it turned out uh, this was my guess and they clicked it and this was the answer if you want it to follow the flight plan in GPS you've got to be in GPS mode so uh, check up here on the panel you see that awesome. mode selector but if you don't I mean you can have some real problems here if you just assume it is going where you think so nav is going to be turning your uh, CDI is what course deviation indicator yeah yeah so it's, it's running off your VOR or an ILS this so this navigational instrument here if you want it to run off the nav radios you want to be in nav if you want it to follow the GPS you click that so just something you should know um, well, by the way, what do you want to do? You want to tune the radios manually as well? Uh, yeah, I say we we're already set up manually. If you want to spin that to Dove Creek, where it's right down oh, the center. Oh, where from? You want it to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll center that up, and then we know we need to fly a uh, what is that? A zero two eight two nine three zero. So about a zero three zero to get to Dove Creek, and uh, you can see here we're on a two oh nine. So if we just do that, we'll use our VOR and then back it up on the GPS. Let's just show people what we're talking about. So Dove Creek here. Right. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. we're down here. Yeah. We're flying to Dove Creek. And we are in range because we're getting an indication from it. And so this is about 2-1. Yeah, but we're flying 2. Right, so, it's so if you be look the... past it, yeah, yeah, like look to the other side. That's the direction we're actually heading. As we come up this magenta line, we're heading about zero three zero. Yeah, zero three zero two nine two one, and we, we can actually cheat here. Check this out. Hmm. Zero three zero. Oh, yep. give this man a go. cigar. He nailed it. Zero three zero. Well, that's how you use VOR to find out where you're at too, or, or where you need to go to get to that beacon. Uh, so uh, who's flying what today? You want to get us out of here, or you want to you want to land us and tell you red? I don't. You're I don't, landing us and tell you red. I don't care. I'm I'm I, already in the hey, chair. Hey, you're you putting know, it in there. You know our last video where we were hanging out. If you want to taxi or whatever while we're doing this, uh, brakes check, magnetic compass. Did we line our? Uh, we did not do okay, our. Okay, let's let's do that. You know what? Uh, it's it's a little off. We Was that two three three? Yeah, let's call it two three two. And we're gonna do it again when we get to the runway. Because I notice it usually is off by the time right. I get to the runway. Oh, oh, jeez, I always forget. It kind of moves backwards. backwards, yeah. Yeah, if you didn't notice that, the way this compass spins is inverse of the way that is, and it'll throw you off a little. Um, do we want to set an autopilot uh, heading as well? Oh, I should have so a beacon. A... Crikey. That's all right. But we, I don't think we've gotten that far, have we, on here? Well, but we already have the engine running, so we should at least... Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Brakes are off. Okay, uh, what were you saying about... Oh, what was I going to talk about? Autopilot heading? I was gonna, oh, yeah, do we want to set a heading bug? Uh, we know we're going to be flying 030, so do we want to kind of bug that? Um, our wind, of course, was from about, what, 270? No, it's uh, 150 at 5. Oh, okay, so we're going to be... Okay, so we're going to take off with a slight cross off the nose. We're going to taxi down to the right and double back. Well, I was thinking to go left. Okay. Take off with a, it'd be a slight tailwind. Right? And what's very, our, very what's our altitude here? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't look. Well, I'm just looking at the altitude. Oh, jeez. You know, we are not really banging this list very well today. This is not good. 
Three zero four six. Okay, and something else to talk about when we get down here and do our run up, our leaning. We don't want to go full rich because we're already at five thousand feet. So we're going to adjust the, uh, right. the mixture for basically a maximum RPM. Anything over three thousand feet, we start leaning. Yes. Correct. Yeah. All right, transponder. We can. Oh, it looks like we are on. So, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I think you're fine. It's it's pretty low. We don't have our POH thing, so I don't think that's unreasonable. And even if it's five knot, it's slightly quartering, so it might only be a four knot tailwind. All right. Yeah, I think you're good. Uh, what's this place called? Cayenta. I think that's about the thirtieth time we've had to look at. I cannot I remember, can't remember this. It. Yeah. Wasn't the OV? No, OVC-10, right? It was the Bronco. Um, oh. We yeah. had an observation plane that was an OV, right? Uh, yeah, the, the twin boom uh, yeah, yeah. Broncos. That was pretty cool. Uh, I was just going to say, if we were actually in a VAT sim or something, we'd be uh, alerting radio Cayenta calls. traffic that we're uh, Cessna, Skyhawks, what, 1720, Papa, yeah. back taxi, runway... Two, four? Two, two, three. Two, three. I was kind of going off our compass there, but... Uh, that's close, close. Yeah. And that compass, remember, I'm, I need to tweak it again. It's probably off again. All right, so flight instruments, we have set the altimeter now. Yep. We have put in the flight plan. Yep. We're going to do the compass again when I spin us around. Okay, we have our VR nav one. Nav one's loaded Dove Creek. Um, the standby frequency is ETL, our second beacon. All right. Uh, we'll do lights and... Uh, compass here in a second. Okay. It's probably a little more space than I really needed for this thing, but that's all right. Better, uh, better safe than sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, we are starting with a you know five thousand foot head start, so this engine's not going to be making great power. Uh, what's that saying? The uh, it's like three things that are, are no are not useful to you: the fuel back at the airport, the altitude above you, and the runway behind you. So <laughs> it's probably better to taxi down here anyway. All right. <clears throat> All right I think my other favorite one I saw is the uh, air airspeed, altitude, and brains. You need two of those three to survive. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go check that compass. Get a good solid one. What do you call that? Five six. Yeah, I'd go five six. Wow. See, not there at all. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, I just that's, got. That's still not five six, sir. Oh, well, I'm six, on the five. wrong side again. Yeah. Ay ay ay. There you go. Uh, is that five sure. six? That's I'll, five, I'll buy it. Five six. You're, you're probably plus or minus one. Okay. Um, and what other instrument was I mentioning? Radio's good. We're gonna do landing lights. Mm -hmm. What well, do we want to do for mixture? I know you said we're we're not gonna go full rich, but yeah. So if we um, if we advance the power here, just I don't know, pick a pick an RPM. Let's say fifteen hundred. Oh yeah, we need some kind of run-up, don't we? Yeah, actually, yeah, I think it's 1800 for your run-up. It's on your next tab. Well, let me set the parking brake. Okay. All right, parking brake set. Okay, it um, says so rich for run-up. Uh, flight oh, controls. Let's do this. Sorry, guys. I want to look out the window. I want to do it like it's real. That seatbelt kind of irritating. All right, everything works, free and correct. Next. All right, uh, fuel selector boat or flight instruments set. We just did that. Okay, fuel selector boat. Check. Uh, elevator trim. Check. Mixture rich for run up. Autopilot disconnect. Autopilot's off. Disconnect and, and how yeah, rich? Yeah, go ahead and yeah bring full. Yep. Okay, we're full rich. All right, full rich, 1800 RPM. 16, 17, and there we go. Oh, 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 oh. 
that last little bit just flew past it. All right, 1800. All right, ammeter, engine instrument suction. So amps are good, suction's good. Green, green, green. Magnetos. Yeah, 125 drop, 50 between the two max. And that's on what, EGT? Tack. Your attack. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. All right, and other magneto. Oh, yeah, man. very close. All right, and both idle check. Go back to both, and going back to idle. Full idle on yeah. the throttle. Yeah, I mean you probably lean a little bit there. It picks somewhere at about half. Yeah. All right, um, radios. Those are set. Brakes release. Doors, windows, flaps. Mixture rich below three thousand. Okay, so if we kind of like gently advance the power here, mm -hmm. um, so like, what would be our clue there, that we need to lean in? Let, let's let's bring it up to like a thousand RPM. All right, we're getting that okay. warning anyway. Yeah. All right, so like let's set there. Now, let's take the mixture and we're gonna watch our RPM here. Now we have lean an it? EGT here we can look for. All right. But we want it to be a little more rich because we don't want to we don't want detonation in the engine when it's under high load during takeoff. All right. So lean it a little bit and. Or, or enriching it, pick away, and you'll see the RPM adjust slightly. Okay, well, we're leaning, and RPM is picking up. Okay, so that's fine. Keep leaning. Not seeing much happening there. Oh, this came up a little bit more. Yeah, come up a little bit more. I'm going to bump. Oh, we just dropped. We okay. just dropped. So adjust that back. So leave it about there. Yeah, so that's probably a good place for it. And if you look here, if you adjust a little before or after, your EGT will probably drop as well. Yep. So if you have an aircraft that doesn't have an EGT gauge, you can use your TAC. All right. Which the Cherokee, for example, the V-Flight Arrow does not have an EGT. So that would probably be our ideal mixture. Oh, I have one more question. Do we have an alt a target altitude for this? Uh... Oh, good call. I mean, we've got um, sector altitudes. We're flying over. We need to be over 6,500 to yeah, pass there. this. 7,100. 71. That's for the whole sector. I don't see anything yeah. actually on the on a route. But let's figure out how high we need to get by the end because uh, it's going to be. Tell you ride. What was it? 90, 70, 9,070 feet. Uh, 70, 70 something. I thought. Oh yeah, you're 9, right. 9,007. Woo! All right, so. Uh, we want to be minimum ten thousand. Yeah. Wow. Good luck. Let's All right. Just, let's climb and go. Let's go for ten. All right. Lights check. Transponder, transponder. check. Throttle full power. Climb at seven nine knots. It says on. Oh, alt. There you go. Derp derp derp. Can I close this? Sure. All right. Okay. Uh, airport. We can't remember the name of. Cayenta traffic. Uh, Skyhawk 172 Sierra Papa departing runway 5 to the northeast northeast because I can read a compass alright full power okay now uh, add a little mixture yeah it doesn't like that there we go there we go now she's moving okay feel the crosswind so, a little so kind of where we were set we can't see the mixture right now that's not important but later we're probably going to come back to about that where that knob was you should be able to rotate already about 60 knots, and then your climb will be about 80. There we go. All right, I'm trimming it up. I'm going to take and adjust your heading bug just in case you want the autopilot. Current mixture setting is harmful. Increase or decrease the mixture. All right, we enrich. I'm gonna turn your pedo heat on too in case we get any clouds. Any I'm uh, I'm not thinking that's very likely, but all right. Quite a view. Well, not necessarily um, clouds, but also a high relative humidity at uh, whatever we're at three degrees. We could run into freezing very soon because we're nearing that. Uh, oh, the dew point? Yeah, zero. I think the one time I had a, a probe freeze on me, it was actually around one or two degrees, and I couldn't see anything. 
but the airspeed just went. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? I, I'm going to set the uh, heading to uh, 030. Okay. For our, uh, like straight out of a western. We just need a tumbleweed, uh, a horse, and some cowboys. There you go. Oh, alright. That. Uh, Did we figure out is this audio going to come back in there? Did we turn that down a little bit? It might. Know. It might. Let's let's crank that down. Sorry. We're really hoping the sound comes out all right on this. We're recording with uh, some different software. We used to use OBS. And then we discovered my processor really uh, has quite the log jam, especially with OBS, and it does a lot better with the uh, built-in NVIDIA. But uh, we have less experience with it, and so. Hopefully we're not making a terrible video with useless sound. Yeah, some of you guys stuck out that. Um, oh my goodness! The, the, the C90, and uh, to be honest, I, I miss getting online with you guys and chatting with you. But we just don't want another another uh, video to come out like that one. Yeah, we felt really bad about that, and particularly because like it was a fun like that would have been a great video had the streaming been operational. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we are climbing. Look at this is just quite the uh, it's like the rock here. Yeah, totally a random. Do you call them? St I wouldn't. What would you call that? It's not a mountain. It's not a, a stalagmite. Cause no, we're not in a cave, caves. right? But it sure looks like, uh, it sure kind of looks like one. We are not holding heading at all. So I'm just, I think that, uh, that wind is blowing me okay. off course. But I'm kind of enjoying looking around. Uh, if you've never been to uh, the desert before, there's just a lot of extremes and you get, you know, even in these rock formations, just bizarre extreme things. This is a section of ortho, so you are looking at uh, aerial photography overlaid over it, so it is accurate to what the area has. Down here you can see these dirt roads and washes, which uh, in the case of rain, as rare as it is, uh, the runoff would create rivers there. Get some flash flooding. Something you gotta be careful about. You wanna throw that thing on a, uh, on a heading hold? Or on a nav hole. It's probably about time. And then you can. But check out this area. This is part of why I really wanted to come back up here. It's just it was so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you've got this uh, plateau or almost this desert flatland here, with a couple of these rock formations sticking out of nowhere. Then yeah, here you have that line of mountains, and then it gets into this very rugged, like I would kind of expect the surface of Mars to look, you know? Exactly. It's just very, <laughs> this like, <is> very... <laughs> extreme. <laughs> Matt Damon's down there somewhere. Right. Needing a rescue. Help him. Alright, uh, so we're gonna do heading. And AP so it engages. Now that's gonna pull off that, I think. Uh, not unless we put in nav. Okay. I, can, I should just click nav. That will actually put us where we want to be. Yeah, so if you guys aren't following there, we have that Dove Creek VOR lined up, and we're going to fly in that 030 off of it. And that's where it's heading now. Uh, let's deal with the vertical. Should we just do VS? Because we're trying to climb to 10,000, right? Um, yeah, correct. And, and we uh, probably... Yeah, she's at plus five. Let's, I'm going to make that a little shallower. And we might want to just adjust our mixture and run it a little bit rich of uh, peak. Make sure we have enough fuel. There you go. All right. Are, are you on the rich side of that? Here, this is leaning. One more click. This is rich peak. Okay, so run just a little rich of peak. Because right. that, that yeah, one click more. Ooh, that, click. Oh, okay. That, that's no. that's good. You want to stay there? Yeah. Run it just a little rich of peak. Because if you're peak, you're your air fuel ratio is about where it should be because you're getting the maximum heat. Okay, we're so we're at peak right now, so you want to go richer. Yeah, because we're climbing right. and the engine's under load, we don't want any 
it's better to have a little bit more fuel in there. And it's just incredible. So, you know, in the realm of things you could waste your money on, um, and time, and time, you know, uh, if we seem like longing dreamers, we definitely are. At some point here, uh, Lee and I are going to get uh, ratings and go flying and, you know, I guess you could spend your Sunday afternoons watching football with everybody else, but... It's to go, by the way. Could also be up in the air, checking out the sites, and wow. Well, and our kids are at kind of that age where for us to have an aircraft like this, if we could get the ratings and, and uh, to actually purchase our own aircraft, they're, they're small enough where a weekend trip and something like this would be an experience in and of itself, you know, with... I'm sure when you were younger, you know, if, if you did get on a road trip, you hopped in the car, you drove, some of the random things you would see was part of the trip. You know, the right. cows in the field or the horses in the field or the, you know, a, I don't know, a, a large lawn chair that was 20 feet tall or something. It became a thing. Well, you know, it really, can I say it shapes your mind, like your perspective on the world and your place in it, as soon as you get a few thousand feet in the air and see, you know, for example, an automobile looks pretty big when you're standing beside it. Right. Doesn't look like much of anything from 5,000 feet. Sure. Um, so it's just a great, great experience, great place to think and dream and see the world. And uh, while this digital rendition is not perfect. It's uh, it's still still a lot of fun to get up here. Yeah, yeah digitally. Sure. So you might notice out the window that we have reached what I always call uh, where the sidewalk ends. This is uh, the end of Ortho, going back into X Plane. Default auto generated graphics, and the X Plane graphics are not bad, but they're just not. Um, they're not satellite imagery, so they're not going to exactly reflect reality. So, for example, we've got... Can we look on the chart and actually see what that is? Something out there. Yeah, why not? That would be a great use of time. And, and really, this is where this is where you get your hard drives worth out of... Oh, 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 I'm sorry. We're not going there. Out of having ortho. But you can go look at the chart. Okay, so we're coming up here. I don't think we passed Bluff. I haven't seen an airport yet. Okay. So we're, oh, we're, we're in this area. We're in Monument Valley. That's why that's why look like it's this. so pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes uh, sense. Mexican hat, oil well, towers. Can we? Uh, all right, let's take a look. So we've got a road ground feature. This is kind of a large terrain plateau right here. Maybe if the auto gen or the uh, terrain mesh is accurate, can we uh, find that maybe on the map? Like a larger. Yeah, see the uh kinda lost where we were, huh? Possibly down here. Could that be a camp? Well, you, you saw that road, and I'm wondering if this uh, Mexican hat and Halcito are possibly it. But okay. I'm also willing to cheat and just verify our location the lazy way. Okay. Fair enough. Not the least of which because it, it can confirm or confirm or deny our suspicions as to our location. Alright, off to our left is Spearhead Mesa. So it's just at the base of that. Let's see, we're learning something. So can we find that on... Uh, uh, and is this a state line? Yeah, we're about okay. to go into New Mexico. So we just crossed the state line. Uh, let's go back to the map. I don't see a state line. I guess those are not reflected here. It's Spearhead Mesa or Cedar Mesa. Yeah, it might be small enough yeah. to not be reflected. Uh, this is a row 163. Can we see 163? That should be a paved road, right? Maybe is it like. Oh, you know what? You know what else can help bring us in? Mm. We're going to bring in all the cheats today. Well, this is one of those things if we were tracking when we took off. 
and what we were seeing out of the window and reconfirming it. Um, AZ Minerals is up to the left and back is Monument Valley. So uh, kind of triangulate almost, yourself. Here. Yeah. So AZ Minerals is there. Oh, it's out here. About here. Oh, so we were that's about where we said we were. See, I thought we were farther up here. Oh, okay. We're down here. Going on up. Sure. So this might have actually been your um, mesa that you were looking at. Okay. So it is so interesting. What is uh, what is this? Is that maybe a Monument Valley Visitor Center? It could be. It would have like a good view. Of, yeah, tourism. Yeah, it could be. Because look at the view they would have here with these three out there. Because aren't these possibly from that vantage point? Are those the three that you always see when you think of yeah, Monument the, the, Valley? The classic postcard. Yeah, because this is like the wider, larger scale one. It could be. And this would be a very touristy road to go down and yeah. see more of them. Get some like, Jeep tour that takes you back through here for a couple hours. Anyway. Well, that was fun. Well, for us. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed your virtual tour of Monument Valley. Um, actually, you can see in kind of the peripheral, the, uh, yeah, the, terrain. the high ground. Which is, this is an interesting thing. Okay, you see the mountains off to the left? Watch this. When we look directly at it, oh, altitude. it changes. Ooh. This is what comes of watching... Uh, watching everything. Well, we are going eastbound yep. VFR, so I'm going to claim 11,000 is the appropriate altitude. <laughs> well, 11.5 would be... 11.5 yeah, because we're VFR. Yeah, VFR oh. is a plus 500. Should we climb another 500 or no? Where, does, where is Epoxia simulated in the plane? That's a good question. I mean, 10,000... 10,000 is kind of a thing. Um, we could climb to 11.5, but if we start seeing tunnel vision, we need to descend. Should we test it? And then we might want to readjust mixture as well. Alright, so we'll climb. So, uh, yeah. If any of you know, uh, we're about to find out because we, we don't. Uh, real quick, let's, let's just do a quick check of the... Uh do you remember where that setting is? What? Hypoxia, hypoxia. I, I know it's, right? it's, a, uh, it's a setting in here. Flight models, damage. Simulate blackout, red out, and hypoxia. Okay, okay. Well, we got it on. It's on, but... We're gonna ask the internet. All right. At what altitude is hypoxia simulated on X-Plane 11? Twelve five. Oh, okay, so 11 five is good. Yep. Thank you, Internet, for answering my question. It's fantastic. I am going to lean slightly, sir, and then... Day in paradise. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's another thing to deal with. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, whoops. I didn't stop it there at the. Yeah, no, I'm stopping. Okay, so we've. Uh, I'm gonna just. Send us back down to um, 11. Ooh, five. All right. Um, so. And do we want to do that sound check I discussed that we never did? Probably should, huh? But let me level at 11.5. All right, we'll that. get ourselves squared away at 11.5. Because we've kind of overshot altitude twice. Here it comes, drum roll. Da, 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 That's good, I'll give it a 
five hundred and three feet. I'll give it plus or minus a uh, couple. I think uh, which instrument is it? hundred feet. Plus or minus hundred feet. Is this that your requirement? Oh, really? Is that the tolerance? Is it fifty feet or hundred feet? Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna pause things here and check it out. All right. That's part of why I'm letting this go. And there it is. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back. I know you probably haven't gone anywhere, but... Uh, we did. We just took a little break. Got a little aggravated at some emails. Had a... Uh, had a... A flight brothers and, consultation. Yep. Yeah, we had a meeting. Yeah. We, <laughs> and now we're back. You know, yeah. other pluses to a real Cessna. I couldn't get emails that would get me annoyed. Well, you could. You could still have your phone on. Right, but... Where we're at, I would hopefully be out of service range. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, possibly. Does that ever occur to you that, like, the more wired the world gets, the actually, in a way, that's a stressor. Like, no, granted, absolutely. it's a great safety thing and this and that, but yeah. your ability to, like, take a vacation from the world is uh, diminished. Well, it doesn't really happen because, I mean, do you remember as, uh, you know, I'm sure as a kid... You'd ride down to your friend's house or something, and you, you call when you got there, and you called before you came home, and that was kind of, <laughs> that was the end of it. Be home before the sun comes down. Yeah, or the street lights come on or whatever it was, and then... If um, you went missing, no one would know for about nine yeah, hours. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, after that, there was like, uh, there were pagers, so then it was like, hey, if you need me, page me, and then you carried around some quarters to drop in the machines, or the machines, the freaking telephones. You know, I saw them on the landing lights. You what? No, nah, whatever. We can turn them off. Oh, we sound but, like two geezers now with yeah, all this. Uh, well, um, yeah, we've become, back when we, I was. Well, but you you make the valid point. Is it's nearly impossible now to unplug. Like right. before, before cell phones. If you were driving from here to there, you would be there when you got there, and you would call somebody and say, "Yeah, we made it safely," or oh, whatever. Oh. Speaking of which, we're out of compliance now. I don't think we have ADSB out. That's a valid point. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't see it on the window. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, we need. Uh, <laughs> who, who makes those? Where's our uh, sporties or my oh, pilot hey, shop? We're we're like red line here on the RPM. Should we throttle pull, that back? Pull throttle back. Yeah. All How, right. How'd that Wait happen? That. Hold on. Yeah. Pull pull power and then um, let's readjust fuel. What? I think when I moved the joystick, I had bumped the uh, throttle, and so things are interesting. So yeah, let's let's play with that there. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, we're, we're filming this in late January 2020, and the ADSB out requirement uh, just went into effect, right? Uh yeah, I think so. <clears throat> what was it? Was it the first? I don't know. So that's gonna that's gonna date this video in the annals of aviation time. That's all right. I'm sure as soon as Microsoft 2020 and X Plane 12 and whatever, no one's gonna watch this anyway. You know, it's always on to the next thing, right? A, to a point. An interesting. Can I pull power back slightly on this? That's like running up at red line, which bothers me. An interesting uh, thought, as uh, Microsoft 2020 gets closer to its uh, public release I guess it's out in some sort of uh, what is it? Tech Alpha or yeah Alpha Capacity I'm sorry for that mic pop I just smashed my kneeboard into the mic boom uh, but as it comes closer if it actually seeks to recreate aviation as realistically I mean we know the graphics are supposed to be ultra realistic yay it's going to sure. look real and you just saw me drooling at my ortho, ortho so you know I'm going to dig that but here's the deal. It's not like older flight sims where the next one got so much better that you had to relearn it. All of these skills, if you know how to turn on a 737NG in X-Plane 11, it's not going to be different in Flight Sim 2020 if it, they do it correctly. Right, it's going to be turning on a 737NG in another simulator. Right, and so just a uh, case in point... 
Uh, I've mentioned this in some of our other videos. Uh, I had our NG pilot friend over here one day who okay. does not do flight sim. The only flight simming he does is uh, what is required for work in the uh, in the real in the level D's in, in the big boy sims. And so we sat down and I just showed him, you know, like here's how the mouse works to change viewpoints and here's what's what on the joystick because I have those hotkeys. And he just went to town because a 737NG is a 737NG. So as much as these videos might become old, I don't think they're really going to go out of date because the content isn't changing. Yeah, but I mean, well, I remember when I had, I think it was Flight Sim 9, <clears throat> Which kind of came out at the, I guess, beginning part of YouTube or something. All right. I, I remember, like, was it Captain Mike Ray? You have one of his books. Yeah, and I think we've mentioned it right. in a live stream. But um, I remember he was writing stuff for, I think, Flight Sim 9. And as soon as Flight Sim 10 came out, Flight Sim 10 started to really add that 3D cockpit. Type okay. Situation. That was one of the big changes. And it almost had that, uh, that sense of motion where your eye point would kind of move a bit. I remember those being big uh, steps forward from Flight Sim 9 and you'd go out there and look at videos and perhaps it was a bit naive of me uh, because Flight Sim 9 and Flight Sim 10 at least as the base game was concerned didn't have that level of realism mm -hmm. so I was looking for that Flight Sim kind of not thinking a Cessna is a Cessna for the most part you know right. with fuel injection carbureted versions and <laughs> different variants between them but yeah yeah to your point you know 737 has been out for what 20 25 years uh, an ng and they're they're the same if a simulator is recreated accurately it should be the same right so really i mean the environmental are the only facts we're a passing bluff right? oh we're going by bluff now okay. um I, I saw the other one on here that's yeah. about the only thing that's gonna <clears throat> And maybe, I don't know if that's part of why. Oh, check this out. We're out of coordinated flight. It could be caused from the wind blow, maybe. Right. Can we, uh, do we have a rudder trim? Uh. Do we have a manual rudder trim on anywhere? All right, that's an interesting question. I have. We may not. I have aileron trim on this joystick, but That's fine. I don't see a rudder trim. Who cares? The autopilot's keeping us straight, so... Sometimes they're on the roof, but not... I mean, not, not in Cessnas, <laughs> but in other aircraft. Right, uh, yeah. There have been trims on the roof, like I think my beach has a roof. The Cherokee does. Trim. Oh, really? I, I remember reading about that in an article, actually. I'm glad you didn't watch my video. I watched your video, but I don't remember you trimming from the roof. No, well, it had an indicator on the uh, on the front panel, and then as I was looking around, kind of in the first ten minutes or whatever of the video, look up, and there was a basically like an old school window crank and okay. an indicator there, but it did have the All indicator right. in front. I just don't remember seeing that in the video, but I, I did watch it. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, that's actually a one of those uh, flying magazine articles. Mm -hmm. talked about that it was a uh, familiarity over familiarity thing where oh yeah somebody got in trouble with the trim being out because they uh sort of assumed it was in and didn't oh. know what they thought i can't remember the that was one of the it. i learned about flying from that right the i laughed section was it in there or was it in the um peter garrison's kind of aftermath article i think it was more of an aftermath one okay all right yeah anyway in case you didn't already know, yeah, we're we're we like reading stuff. Um, Flying magazine, of course, being nerds. Yeah, nerds. But it's kind of cool because we can read we can read that and see what systems change, like a Garmin one thousand to a was it G three thousand, you know, Garmin and uh, Cirrus, right? Partnered with that Autoland on the oh, right. on the right. Cirrus Jet, but they've also been developing. Um, the Autoland system really in conjunction with uh, Piper in the M600, which I think used to be called the, is the Meridian, Piper Meridian, is their turboprop. So um, that was actually in a podcast I listened to as well. Do you remember uh, earlier this week when there was a, a test flight, I think the Airbus 350 was testing out an automated takeoff. Takeoff, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a first. 
If you didn't know this, uh, Auto Land has been around since probably the L1011. Sounds about right, yeah. And, uh, but Auto Takeoff, that is not a thing until this week. Yeah, so, um... I gotta admit, I don't, I don't really know why. What need is this fulfilling that we, uh... Normally when you find technology coming in, it's to reduce a workload or a known problem thing or like auto land for weather. The Garmin auto lands for an emergency or a pilot incapacitation. Right, right. Well, because, you know, you're in a, frequently in a single pilot uh, aircraft. Right. Which might have passengers and... Um, People unfamiliar with flight. And these things do happen, like... Um, God, there was that guy on his first flight lesson and his instructor in Australia had a heart attack hmm. and uh, they talked him down he was able to land the plane and point is it could happen and if he'd had an auto land button I'm sure he would have jammed it sure and it probably would have honestly been the safer way to get down than him um, getting just, the absolute crash course over the radio it just dawned on me that again people are like if they're still here, they're listening to us talk and the camera angle's not really changing. So, sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Didn't find it? No, I was actually, yeah, I was just checking the flying magazine here because uh, the subscriptions are piling up on my desk and I read the articles here and there. The real problem is I'm not reading through them chronologically, which is... Oh, yeah. Something I do that annoys Lee to no end. I just well, read a little of this and a no, little of that, and now you don't know where yeah. the heck you are. You know, honestly, when I, uh, I think when I started subscribing to Flying, it must have been around 2007, I think, 2006 or 7. Um, uh, Captain Les Abend or whatever, his was always the first article. Then I'd hit Dick Carl's and then Peter Garrison's, All right. and then I would read it front to back. Like, I always went to theirs first because he was the pilot, and then the other one was the pilot heart surgeon, and then the other guy was the, uh, built his own, uh, airplane. Oh. And, uh, so, like, those were always interesting techn uh, technicalities as Peter Garrison, so, of course, it's the nerdy, geeky, why this works, or, you know, largely, um, was kind of his thing. So, I always hit those three first, and then I'd read it front to back. I think J. Mac McClellan was the editor at the time. Well, we don't really uh, get a kickback here from Flying Magazine, but Flying Magazine, if you want to sponsor us, I think we talk about you every <laughs> single time we, we, uh, we hang out, right? We get together here. Yeah, it's just a thing. I, I will have to say, I miss the magazine, the paper copy. That's where I got the idea from it. You, oh, want, you want to push that, actually? So, uh, <laughs> if you watched Lee's LDA approach video... You'd be a minority. <laughs> you'd be one of ten exclusive people on the planet. No, uh... Well, odds are, if you watched it, you might have actually known what an LDA is, and you probably actually have some sort of pilot rating, because most of our newbie folks, it's just not something they're going to look at, but, uh... In here, they have a section called Chartwise in the Flying Flying Magazine from November 2019, and they walk you through the chart for the Van Nuys LDA, and that is the uh, procedure. C, LDA C, which is the C circling, for? circling minimum. Circling. Ah, that's valuable. That <laughs> that is important. And so that's the procedure that Lee demonstrated and talked you through um, on that video. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about go check it out on the channel and uh, if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea you can still click the channel anyway we've got we've got videos for people who are really into the technical just like that LDA and we have just some candy garbage that I put out that uh, if you just dig airplanes and weird stuff I've got a few on there yeah yeah so we were having a conversation earlier today this is completely jumping topics on okay. uh, ventral fins, which would basically be small little fins or wings put underneath an aircraft, kind of, uh, usually on the back. I've never seen them anywhere but the back. Yeah. And we were talking about the Boeing 707 had them to uh, 
help with Dutch roll pr primarily on takeoff, I think, and then they uh, I think they changed the vertical stabilizer and that sorted it out, so they got rid of it after that. But uh, Lee was commenting at lunch today that there's a number of fighter aircraft. Uh, we're looking at the uh, F-104 Starfighter in particular that have this little ventral fin or maybe two. And we're just trying to figure out. So if any of you are watching this, got this far, and actually know the answer, shoot it out there in the comments. What, you know, what aerodynamic problem are these things solving? Because we already have the vertical stabilizer. Right, yeah. Uh, this thing is a uh, single engine. Uh, 104 is a single engine fighter, so it's yeah. not like uh, it's to help counteract asymmetrical thrust in an engine out. Right, because so, F-16 had them, um, F-14 has them, that, that kind of came off the top, uh, was it Dash 8, I think, And because I, I had commented going to work and seen it on a CRJ, I think it was a 700, you know, that had them. So, yeah, we were just kind of talking about that over lunch, like, uh, you know, is it the Dutch roll issue, is it a uh, l longitudinal stability issue that's inherent somehow with that airframe? Um of all the geeky things we've seen, we've never run into an answer other than the 707's use. Yeah. And actually, if, you, uh, if you've if you ever had a discussion about ventral fins with someone during lunch, just go ahead and <laughs> just, just say, yeah, me too, because I bet it's going to be a short list. <laughs> oh, my. That's uh, If you're watching this, that's why you're watching this, because you're an av geek like us. And you actually think this is interesting, and so do we. And we're not boring. And nobody else on the planet but Lee and I, and probably you and six other people, think it's interesting, and none of us care. Yeah, sure. So we're going to talk about it anyway. Yeah. Hey, now, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, while we were talking about ventral fins, uh, I was observed by the person at the next table over in the restaurant as having a B-17 on my shirt, because... Of course, I'm an av geek, so I'm wearing a nerdy shirt. And uh, but it's not one of those really dorky, nerdy shirts. No, it's not. It's, it's not it's super cool. Dorky. It's super cool. It's almost as cool it, as uh, low altitudes plane hub shirts, but but not quite that cool. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's the uh, was it what, kind of retro or vintage? It's like a vintage Boeing. Right. We got the the official Boeing plate on the front with yeah. their old logo, and uh, on the back is the uh, silhouette overhead of a B-17. Yep. But the cool thing is the uh, gentleman who asked, now I didn't get to hear this, so Lee will have to tell you, but he yep. has his own interesting aviation uh, history. So t tell yeah, us what he, he told had, you. He had a background working on B-47s and uh, B-52s. And I think he said he was in the Air Force from uh, 51 to like 54 or something like that. So uh, yeah, he saw Tim's shirt and made a comment and he had just seen some movie or show I don't know uh, I yeah. didn't I didn't quite get that from him B forty sevens is that a B forty seven an X plane <laughs> it might be it's uh, uh, it's with updated something with updated radio units or JADO units actually is that down at Davis Mountain the Pima mm, so it looks pretty barren and brown yeah yeah this this looks like yeah this one is Pima um, okay this one's out here guys we we live. I don't know how long is the ride down there from here. So like an hour and a half, two hours. And that's annoying. Thank you. No, I have to cut that out. <sighs> it's also got your face there. Internet. Oh, I don't mind my face. My face okay. is beautiful. Well, then we can continue talking from here to there, and then you. I just don't want my name. Part. All right, hold tight. Okay, so we're gonna close <laughs> this window, and I need to make <laughs> one quick hold tight, hold tight. Pal, and we're back. So, uh, anyway, you're saying the B47 and the buff. Oh yeah, B B47, the B52. Um, yeah, he he was working on those, and he had just watched a movie on the. Uh, so I think he, it was like Raid on Tokyo or something. It was about the the do little raiders oh, taking nice. the B25s and flying to Tokyo. Um, now, uh, you have your own little tidbit with that because you've been to the field where they practiced for that right yeah it was rumored um when i was stationed down in florida that they the section of runway that we flew the rc airplanes uh that was in the aero modelers club down there 
and that the section of runways that we flew off of were used for the, uh, the B-25s during their, uh, you know, when they were trying to find out if they could take it off in the 300 feet or whatever distance they had with the aircraft loaded on the deck. Do we need to recap the Doolittle Raid? Is there any chance that our viewers might not know what that is? Um, like like five second yeah. cliff note, following Pearl Harbor right. uh, as an American response to sort of show the ability to uh, reach out and touch. Uh, B-25s, which are kind of a short to medium range bomber, right, yeah. were loaded onto, is it uh, Hornet? I think it was the Hornet, yeah. Uh, which is an aircraft carrier which was not built for bombers, built for fighter aircraft. And so they had to see if it was possible to get the bomber airborne in uh, the distance of deck that they would have available. Not to mention the fact that the planes also had to be stored on deck. Sure. Because they're too big, I think, to fit down the uh, on the hangar bay. So you have the additional problem of taking off in a, a parking lot of... If they had those back then. I don't know. Did they have, like, airplane lifts back then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I know the Midway did, but the Midway was... I mean, maybe not every aircraft carrier. Sure. But that was one of those... In World War II, aircraft carrier designs were not set. It wasn't like we found the formula that works... And the only thing from here is to, uh, you know, up the technology. Sure. So if you look at particularly the Japanese models, they were very different. Um, our tack's up again. Do you know what it is? It's that tailwind. Mm. See, look at our ground speed. The tailwind's pushing us, which is driving our... Uh, ground speed, 120. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because we were at about 105 when I pulled it back. And then our tailwinds came up. Has come up. Whatever is more correct. Most correct. Wow. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ready for a grammar quiz. Uh, I'm just going to stop. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, the, uh, you're the more educated amongst us, sir. Yeah, I might be an educator, but uh, that's I'm not the English teacher. That is definitely not my bag. That's uh, nor mine. But, uh, yeah, no, so, so fantastically interesting raid. They successfully bombed Tokyo. It may not have been of great military value, but uh, from a psychological, strategic perspective, yeah, it, yeah, it's a uh, it's it sends the message, and it really just is. It's a thing in history. I mean, for how many bombing missions were flown in the war, the uh, number of bombing missions that have a name that right. people know, uh, not many. Yeah. I mean, and that doesn't discount uh, them attacking us, too, because that was quite an undertaking in and of itself. Oh, absolutely. Because you know, they were using short-range fighters, torpedo bombers, and all that stuff. So from a total avgeek perspective, um, it was all very interesting. Of course, from an American perspective, it's a, uh, well, and a Japanese perspective, depending on what part of the war, it's an unfortunate um, Right. Well, yeah. I mean, war Mark is in history. war is always going to be awful and destructive, um, uh, and usually there's heroism to be found on both sides. And sure. uh, you know, I guess a lot of it's always perspective. Which side you're, which side you're sitting on. So just uh, getting back to the av geek part of it, the Japanese and American Pacific operations, from a navigational standpoint, whew. That's some scary stuff. The uh, hmm. the, uh, the the fighters in particular off the carriers really had almost nothing to go by. Sure, yeah. And they're operating. You know, there is no alternate. <laughs> you you find your way back to the carrier, and if it's still afloat, great. And if you don't, you are in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Right, crash is, next to the closest friendly vessel. If any, yeah, it's uh. It's, yeah, I really, I can't, I can't even fathom what it would be like to be in such a small plane out there. Um, well, you've flown, you've flown Transpac before, commercially, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you get a chance to look out the window and just contemplate the absolute nothing no, that's yeah. around you? Yeah, anytime, and I think less myself, but uh, you know, when my wife travels back and she's over the ocean, like. I have difficulty sleeping, 
you know, and I've got flight radar 24 up and I'm right. watching it move slowly across the ocean. And it normally, it doesn't bother me when I do it, but when she does, I'm like, that is a large, that is a massive expanse of nothingness. Um, and it's just one of those things, you know, that, uh, you, now, for what it's worth, uh, before you all have nightmares, if you're not familiar with how this works, most of the routes from the U.S. to Asia are actually flown up the coast of the United States over kind of the southern south, southern-ish area of Alaska, yep. down the side of Russia, Japan. And so you're not really out in the middle of the Pacific. Now, um, I did fly Transpac once. Uh, out to Hawaii and then the rest of the way and that was literally over the middle of the ocean. Was that on a 744? Uh, 767s. Okay, so probably Guam and um, we did Midway would have been like diversion E-tops. Right, and that's the thing. You can always look up uh, all of those flights at pre-planned. If something goes wrong, we go here. Uh, the funny thing is they're not necessarily uh, island resorts you're going to be stomping at. Usually they're military auxiliary fields. They may or may not even have people there. And uh, the airlines all have to have contingency plans for how they would, uh, as quickly as possible, respond with food and supplies and evacuation. Uh, it happens rarely. I think they've had a few come down... Um, for emergencies in Alaska. Sure. What is that out there? Like ADAC? Yeah, ADAC's out at the end. Uh, there's another one too. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, they'll just have to land there. And I mean, the field's acceptable for it, but another aircraft has to be brought in. So it's. Uh, it beats swimming. Yeah, I mean, when you're in a, a 777 and you're looking out there and you see the engine and you're like, the only thing between us and being in the middle of the ocean is two of those cans. It's, uh, I don't know. You start to start to think, wow, our faith in human engineering is pretty, pretty, sure. pretty good. And as well, it should be. I mean, statistically, if you look at, uh, just go pull up flight radar, look at how many aircraft are uh, uneventfully floating their way over the Atlantic and the Pacific uh, every hour of every day. It's pretty extraordinary. Do you have a side view on here? Sorry. No. Uh, oh, there you oh go. yes, Seven. I do. Never mind. I don't even know what my pre-programs are. Well, and actually, you know, talking about ETOPS as well, I saw a Facebook post and um, somebody was talking about ETOPS and they had referenced, I think they said two hours. They're like, oh yeah, ETOPS is within two hours. Because I think somebody saw, they did a sim brief for their flight. Mm -hmm. I think they were a new simmer and they did a... Uh, a sim brief where it sh you know how it shows the time rings you know, okay for yeah. etops entry and they're like what are these rings and somebody's like oh it's e -tops. i saw that post yeah right so did you read on where somebody's like and they oh, didn't it's know two what the hours. atlantic tracks are either right yeah yeah the nat tracks but then um of course etops is dependent upon equipment and airline and whatever so it's not it's not two hours so like I thought of commenting in there, but then I didn't want to take the time to actually look up the further detail because I think the isn't it like this Airbus A three fifty or the seven eight seven. It's like ETOPS like three forty or something, right? It's almost like four or five hours away from land. Is all right. So um, ETOPS is extended range twin engine operational performance standards and uh, so this does not apply what dates that? to a quad jet because um, ETOPS kind of changed it what changes it, over time yeah the definition but it basically is the same thing it's twin engine long range over water ops so if you didn't know this um, well for the longest time everything had four engines so it wasn't really an issue Sure. And then as the twin jets and the uh, tri jets grew in utility and uh, their place in the market became larger, the authorities had to step in and say, well, let's make sure that we don't accidentally end up with a engine out and a plane coming down to the Pacific. And so these rules were generated to see how long you could reasonably expect a certified aircraft to make it on one engine, basically. Is that, is that functionally what it is? 
Uh, yeah, um, a couple of the things were were that, and then like you were talking about, is the ability to support that, and then like parts shelves. If you think about it, if an engine is made by GE or Pratt and Whitney or whoever, mm -hmm. and they have a batch of bad, I don't know, hy hydraulic drive assemblies that come off the line when those engines are built. If there's a batch failure, it could jeopardize both engines. So you would kind of need like I think different batch areas so that if one failed it wouldn't necessarily be um on the other one have you noticed we're yawing and then yeah correcting yeah um i was trying to spin the the autopilot heading knob actually we're not in heading mode correct but when i spun the autopilot heading mode it started turning Okay, let's so, check our compass. We're at 3-4 and 3-4. Uh, I was trying to set us an outbound track off of uh, DVC. What was that? Dove Canyon, I think, or something like that. Um, Dove Creek. Oh, you, you mean to the next... Uh, yeah, I was trying to set the heading bug up. That way I could transfer over, then swap the VOR, and then reset the uh, the radial. Gotcha. And you need to know what our next track it's is? It's 052, but... Uh, I not that, that, not that I don't trust you. I just want to look. Yeah, sure. And you are correct. So here, guys, this is what he's talking <laughs> about. 052 is the next heading when we hit the VOR to take us up to cones. Right. All right. And so, and you did not set that? No, or? if you spin that, like the aircraft's banking for some reason, even when we're nav mode. Yeah, 052. Which I don't get. Now, why did it do that? You know what? It may have just been a coincidence that when you spun it, it was we started hitting stuff. some wind. Okay. Because I'm still seeing this. Look, we're completely flat. Yeah. And we're yawing left, and then the aircraft is correcting to the right. And this probably has to do with this uncoordinated whatever. Sure. And it's a high power setting, so you would kind of expect a slight left yaw. Let's, uh, I just want to check something here real quick. I want to see if I... There we that, go. That's rudder center. I'm just going to go make sure that's actually done. Okay, our rudder is definitely centered because I've jammed the key numerous times now. So that's what it's doing. This this wind is blowing us, I think, and then it'll go a little bit and then it, it banks to correct. Now, the good news is this next turn is going to bring us... A, it's going to turn the nose a little more towards the wind. So... It, it might not be fighting it as much. Actually, let's find the nearest air, uh, the nearest weather reporting station, okay. and uh, see what what this wind is. We should probably reset our altimeter as well when we're pulling the weather. So um, this is Dove Creek. Uh, that's not reporting. Who might be this Hopkins? Hopkins is a little far away, tell, but tell you right, might. Yeah, but they're up in the mountains. I'd, that could be I'd go with Hopkins because it's the maybe this Monticello out here. To the uh, west. He's not got anything either. No. Oh, you know what? Blanding. We just passed Blanding. They're not far behind us. 127.75. Yeah. All right. 127.75. And we're going to use this because that wheel is too slow. Four, seven. Three zero four seven wind calm. Hard to believe wind is calm. Oops. It, well, it might be calm on the ground, but it's not here. All right. Well. So, do we want to go ahead and spin that to the uh, the old oh five two? Oh, we still have two miles. Okay. Uh, you mean the uh, nav? Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah, see, it's deflecting now. Okay. I gotcha. Oh, yeah, I guess I Actually, could have totally done I'm that. I'm going to huh? let you do it. All right. Lee's in the right-hand seat, so i got to find things for him to do. Otherwise, he just sits here and chats with us. Right. Because now that we're not live streaming anymore, he's lost his primary role, which was to handle chat. Because I can talk, but I can't, <clears throat> I can't keyboard. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my gift. And we should get our turn uh, thing coming up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. 
12, 11. Well, see, it's not in GPS mode right now. Uh, do, is, do you have oh, our next? Do you have our next one programmed? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be this one. Right, but we should get the from any moment. So we're going from. All right, but when that here hit it. Okay. Change this over. Because you want it to track to the next VOR and not just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was hoping it would track on the outbound, so we should have got the from. From 052. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Because we passed it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because see, now I'm <clears> not <throat> sure what it's doing. Let's see. Is it correcting back to... Oh, it's lost its mind. I just put us into GPS because that'll take us where we need to go. Uh, well, let's come off uh, GPS real quick. I want to just see if it'll get back on that nav. All right. I, w I want to put this at 5.7. Oh, uh, five, 252 from, um, yeah, I guess that'd work. Let's see if this gets us back on track. You know, it's funny, we flew the uh, 727 FlyJ VOR. Right. We've done it a couple times, once on the live stream, once just for fun, once or twice for fun. Never have these VOR issues, but when I'm in the Cessna, <laughs> I have VOR issues, which is really odd because I fly them the same way, but I always back it up with the GPS. Yeah, that is weird. But, but see, let's see if we start getting this course correction to the right. There it goes. <clears throat> Coming in, you notice coming we're, in. On a, we're on a from? Yeah, because you're from the station. So it might it might chase this a little bit, so it may overcorrect. And... But it seems to be tracking now. All right. Well, you can see the train coming up out the uh, out in the distance there. Forty nine miles. So this flight has taken an hour and eleven minutes. And in the real world, of course, it has taken a little longer because we took a couple breaks here and there since engine start. Um, hey, uh, look at our fuel situation. Just yeah, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's about eleven gallons. Right. I'm saying there's about two hours. That's about 12 gallons. Two hours at a sipping economy, which is not what we're doing. Yeah. I, I always flight plan on mine for 10 gallons an hour. Let, let's say we have an hour and change. Just, sure. Um, ooh, boop, eep. What did I do? Ugh, oh, I just spun our compass. That's the problem with the zoom knob also interacting with things, is I just accidentally uh, changed the compass setting. Do you also lock your, your camera there? Oh, okay. Uh, I have every once in a while I've been having some keyboard issues 50? where it doesn't want to go. I'm O five zero. Yeah, 050. bang on. Is there's happening again. What? But it definitely ignored it when I did it. Okay, now actually the compass it's, looks correct. It's pretty close, yeah. I thought I had uh, knocked it off there. Look at that uh, inclinometer or whatever there. Turn coordinate. Yeah, it's like a half half a ball out. <laughs> Yes, yes it is. <laughs> oh, good times. Hey, there's a, there's a feature. You want to see if we can find this on our, there's a road and a river. You want to see if we can find it on the Sky Vector? All right. Right yep. there. We're right here. Yep. That looks beautiful. That would be a heck of a drive, I bet. Yeah. How many times does that happen when you're uh, you're doing a flight and you're like, oh, that's a place that I'd like, like to see because, you know, sure. it's so neat. So where's this microwave transmitter, huh? I don't know, but I wouldn't want to be on that road. Yeah. Oh, hold it. Oh, wait, it doubles check, back. Check. Hey, what's that? A helipad. That must be like a... That's like expert level flying if you can land at that angle. Dove Creek, that's your VOR, any of you Hilo pilots out there. DVC 114.6. Go, uh, go uh, check this go thing check out. Go check that out. If you uh, take a screenshot, 
Send it to our Facebook page. <laughs> Are there... I, actually, I bet that's like National Park Service or something like that, you know? Well, I have a suspicion it's actually the service... Uh, a service platform for this microwave. Or, or wait, is this the microwave tower or the square? I think the square is. The, the dot is the altitude feature. All right. The 8220. It's probably a service pad for whatever that transmitter does. That's, that'd be my guess. I mean, there's nothing else here. Why Why would you fly there? Well, yeah. I don't know if they how well they model the dirt road. So I know some of the places that we had out here on white tanks, it was mm -hmm. just like dirt road and you drove up. It was like, an, I don't know, 45-minute drive to the top. Oh, live traffic. There's somebody up here. Now, live traffic has uh, an update out, which I downloaded but have not installed yet. Mostly because I'm being lazy about, um, I don't know if I have to redo all the CSL models. I remember that Ugh. being mildly irritating yeah. the first time. And the version of live traffic I'm using is actually working. And so I um, I don't always upgrade things that are actually working because I don't always see the purpose in spending that time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Somehow we're, we're off there, the 052. There we go. Well, that's because I had changed it to what it told us to in GPS mode, but... Oh, gotcha. So there's KAIB on our... Which, that was our planned alternate. Alright, so you can see, uh... You know, we're... In this area we just crossed here. We're probably approaching these roads. We should see a ranch down there. Should we look out the window, find the ranch? Sure. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. If there's a runway, though, for sure we would, or terrain features. I think, I think roads, terrain features, and airports are the best way to use um, the, the uh, default, default scenery. scenery. Yeah. I would be really tickled, though, if they had put in just a structure to well, where, yeah. it said, uh, where it said the ranch is. But, you know, not required, just would be kind of nice if they had that level of precision about it well you know and talking about that microsoft 2020 stuff and and the photo scenery i mean you've got some ortho i've got some ortho um, orbex there's a few other companies that have those scenery enhancements and just the sheer size of them man you couldn't do a globe the only i think the only like economical way to get photo data is I guess how Microsoft's it's presumed they're gonna do it or how they do it, you know, using their streaming their being yeah, using a streaming overlay. Um man, it's gonna take some computing power, good well, stable uh, internet connection. Computing power. Well think of streaming. If you're streaming that and it's downloading data and you're Oh yeah and and and, and, and No, that'd be terrible for streaming because you're you're burning up a lot of bandwidth. Well, yeah, you'd have to have, you know, giga, gigabit internet or whatever, a computer that's going to do it, upgraded modems and all that stuff, which is fine until you have to do it. And, I mean, you get people on, like, the X-Plane 11 forums or whatever, and they're like, you know, should I spend $30 on this airplane or this scenery? Well, if, if the person's <laughs> asking that type of question, they're not in a situation where you can... You can really ask them to go buy five hundred dollars worth of network uh, hardware to upgrade what you've got, so you can play a flight sim. Not saying that's gonna, you know, that it's gonna be that way. There's not a whole lot of uh, yeah. There's not much information out there yet, but right. you can see. I mean, one thing's for sure: it's gonna have to use processor, sure, and it's gonna have to use bandwidth. Sure. So um, RAM memory is gonna have to be nuts. Yeah. Uh, not to mention, when you're pulling in that much data, you know, is it going to cache it on your hard drive and then delete it? Well, I was probably just going to throw it up in your RAM. Or uh, it's just going to sit there and crap load of RAM. That's, uh, yeah, I guess that's one way to do it. It's just, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how people with a lower end system are able to interact with it. Because quite honestly, it might turn out it's not worth your time. 
Or maybe if uh, if it's a very lean. I do not know enough about this to really speak in a sensible way, but if it's somehow very economical and processor and graphic oh, consumption, sure, sure. maybe it'll be on par or, or uh, easier than X-Plane to run, but uh, I find that unlikely. Yeah, I find it unlikely. And, you know, it's a, it's a tough job for any of them. I mean, you know, we're not maxed out on everything here. Um, I, I think most most users are not maxed out, and I'd say probably a fair bet of the of the marketer, the consumers are probably right around mid tiers, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the graphical um, requirements, just through you know, hardware constrictions, you know, CPU, RAM, or uh, even hard drive space. But um, anyway, hey, on to other things. Isn't the new Zebo mod out? <laughs> are you joking? We could probably almost say that every week. Nothing but uh, love. But uh, what was it? Three point? Was it three point? Five, four. Do, do they have a, a fresh one? No, there is a fresh one that came out. Yeah, and um, of course, not long after it was announced, I saw a post on the X Plane Eleven Facebook page. Somebody goes, um, "How do I get it?" It says maximum download number. Oh. So <laughs> you, you kind of run into that, and I think uh. I think um, what's his name, Nico. I think he said, "If you run into this, this is the workaround." But yeah, that's that question will never go away. It always comes back every single time. Yep, every time. But I'll whatever. be honest, I don't update my Zebo because it works. I'm definitely in, I think, an early 3.30. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's, uh, that's sorry, noises. Loud there. I was just trying to pull up the, uh, the Zebo group to see it. So if you're not familiar... Uh, Facebook actually has a number of excellent forums, and the three that we deal with are the Zebo Community Group, yep. uh, the X Plane 11 Addict Group, and the X Plane 11 Group. Sure. And uh, interestingly, you would think all three of these groups would have the same people because, I mean, the Zebo is a more specific uh, down to one aircraft. Mm hmm. But you see plenty of Zebo stuff on the other two. Yeah, for sure. But uh, we get, I mean, there's a lot of traffic. We posted our new video uh, yesterday on there, and I think uh, each site has had about a thousand people look at the post. Okay. I haven't looked Sadly, recently. only about 150 of them have decided it was worth clicking on the video. But, you know, like 2,000 people have seen the post, so that's great. Sure. And uh, maybe it's not your bag. Yeah, you know, maybe they don't want to experience twenty thousand feet per minute <laughs> climb rates in a British oh, fighter. Oh, so Dom Henry, the developer of that, he and I had been chatting back and forth in the forum, and uh, he actually sent me that aircraft about three days before release. I was going to try and get him the video before he released, but uh, I wasn't available until the day he released it actually to work on it. Mm -hmm. And we were going back and forth. I had watched a uh, biography, or sorry, a documentary talking about Thunder City down in South Africa where they preserved a couple of these. Can we look at that map again? Sorry. And they have the last... Um, 095 out of cones. Uh, they have the last airworthy ones. Now, I don't know that they're actually flying them anymore since 2009. I'm not sure if they're still flying them. But I do believe they've been maintained in airworthy condition. Anyway, the documentary claimed the Lightning had a 50,000 feet per minute climb rate. So uh, the developer said, no, nah, I think it's more like 20. And that got me thinking, 20 might be the sustainable climb rate. But okay. it might be good for 50 in a ballistic zoom. Is that why you did that? Well, okay, I did the ballistic <laughs> zoom because uh, as I was reading up on it, yeah, uh, that's something they used to do with them. Sure, sure. And they got it up to 88,000 feet. Well, I was like, challenge accepted. I, <laughs> I, I think the best I did was about 70,000 feet. Yeah. Um, but... The crazy thing is, okay, at least the uh, U.S. Air Force would put thrusters on the aircraft because when you get out to that altitude and you're out of inertia, those control surfaces aren't touching anything. There, there's there's no air. air. <laughs> there's yeah. no oxygen. And so your problem is if the aircraft just enters sort of a, a free fall to re-enter the atmosphere, at the point at which you interact with oxygen... Or you, air. Uh, yeah, you want to hit the atmosphere... 
in a flight position. <laughs> True. Otherwise, if you hit the atmosphere just like a a pancake, uh, it's just going to fold the aircraft up and, and game over. So the the thrusters would allow you to rotate the aircraft so that the wings and the leading edge are actually pointed at the atmosphere so you re-enter it like a, a diver entering the pool, I guess. But uh, surprisingly, the lightning, at least in sim, was pretty controllable and, uh, you know, the uh, elevator was still actually responding. Hmm. I mean, I couldn't keep pulling up, but I was able... I felt like pushing down, I had some control. Okay. I saw that on your video. It, it looked like it... Uh... It didn't pitch down rapidly, but I, I mean, I guess you wouldn't want any massive control input anyway. But yeah, it did look controllable, and I think you even said mm -hmm. as much. And I, I cut it out, um, but it re-entered, and as you know, as we got down into the uh, 50s and the 40s, it became obvious that we had a lot more control authority, and then I leveled out back in the 30,000s, I think, and mm. away we went. So was there a benefit to them actually stacking those two engines because i mean oh yes 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 i lo left this out Brits. of the video i left this out of the video because um i found a ton of cool details and i was just too busy talking about other things to get them all in okay so when you put two okay if you have one engine sticking out okay it's going to create drag right right so let's call that a, a, a drag rate of one okay if you have two engines side by side yeah. how much drag do you have uh, double two Okay. Sticking them both in the same tube, okay. they were able to get the drag at 1.5 instead of 2. Okay, but... So it was half as much resistance. So that was one plus. That was not the only plus. From the, a frontal area? Right. Okay. Uh, the other bonus to that was there's no asymmetrical thrust when okay. you use one. Agreed. You can also shut one down... Yeah, while taxiing or whatever you mentioned. Well, that. even in flight, that was an option. Okay. Uh, it was rarely done because the hydraulic systems could be lost. Okay. Like, if you have an engine out and only one was right, like, then all of a sudden, now you've got a dead plane. You're sure. trying to restart an engine, and if you weren't in a level flight situation, bad yeah. news. So, um, yeah, that, that's about the best thing. And it's also from that era. I mean, they started developing that thing in the 1940s. Right, so we're at the beginning of supersonic flight and yeah, jet it, it's propulsion. It's just like everything uh, is just being figured out. Like we were talking about aircraft carriers earlier. You know, like right now, every airliner being produced roughly looks the same. Yeah. Broad yeah, strokes yeah. looks the same. Right. Uh, fighter planes, broad strokes, quite similar. Well, they all interact with air, and air moves a certain way that kind of makes sense. But, I mean, like, nobody's building something that's wildly different. Right, right. They're, they're all, like, within a certain realm, a very similar configuration. Sure. So, um, back at that point, not the case. They're, they're trying everything, and I think this is just one of the things they tried. Now, did have some problems, which you might surmise. Maintenance. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah, that would be annoying. Yeah. So uh, there's a hatch to take that engine out the top, and there's okay. a lower panel to take the engine out the bottom. But one of the issues with taking the engine out of the top is, um, you know, fluids and whatnot can get down into the lower engine, and then you have fire problems. Sure. So it's not really an ideal situation. Um, I don't know. If you've ever been around mechanics... Uh, cars lately are getting so efficient in their use of space that yeah you know like your oil filters against your firewall the, the yeah. engineer designs it because they they're never gonna have to work on it anyway right. and it I'll, needs to go in easy from the factory not necessarily right. in your driveway exactly and a lot of these systems are so good that uh they're not going to be replaced until far beyond so I don't know. Have you ever replaced anything on a car where it was evident that, like, this can theoretically be replaced, but it can't really? Yeah, well, you know, not not so much to that degree, but I think it was my 2011 Civic Si that I had. Um, I found the easiest way to get to it was it, it was on a lift. Um, it was on a lift, and then 
you had to take the wheel off and then the easiest way to actually get to the oil filter mm -hmm. was by sticking a filter wrench through a hole oh my god and then on the back side where the my, easiest way yeah like it was easier to do that than like my 2000 civic si it was just right on the front you could use your hands and right there but in 2011 you know the, the engine was are we in heading mode spun around um we need 095 off this one by okay, the way it's doing what you just told me earlier look at that Oh, no, wait, never mind. It's just doing nav. Okay, so this is nine minutes out. We should probably... Um, I'm going to put us in heading mode. Focus on some landing action here. All right, speaking of which, Lee, I think it's time you I, flew the airplane. I don't, I don't want to do it. Why are you putting this with me? All right, so there's 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 history in Telluride. Oh, wait, hold on. Are you... You got room there? Not really. All right. All 130 pounds of me. I don't fit over here. Um... <laughs> So the last time we came into Telluride, if we haven't ever told you this tale before, we probably had was at some early point. in our flight simming days of X plane, which was I, about two years ago. Yeah, I had just gotten the Flight Factor 757, and Lee was here, and I was like, "Oh, let's take this thing somewhere. Let's go from Phoenix to Telluride." And it was nighttime, and it was snowing, and Lee. Uh, advised me let's use the ILS which is a um, it's an offset yeah offset localizer but it actually does not have a glide slope and it has no glide slope and there was an RNAV available but we didn't use it so needless to say this was a bad idea uh, completely compounded by every awful decision we made along the way and we got in there in this uh, where's this airfield little, oh there it is little bowl that is Telluride oh runway in sight and uh, so actually, yeah, you're looking look at it right now. We kept flying around in this in the absolute dark and snow. Why does that interact with that? Sorry. What? what? Like I just turned this a few degrees to the left. We're in heading mode. Now. Oh, we're in heading. Okay. But it, it did turn immediately when I switched it earlier, just like you described. So yeah, yeah. I, I was curious about that. Either I accidentally did it right when the nav was switching. Or I don't know, but we actually have passed the nav last radio, so V lock is kind of irrelevant now anyway. Can we get I'm um, sorry, ATIS real quick or AWOS? Oh, let's do that. Do you uh, give me a frequency? Uh, eighteen three two five. One one eight three two five. And I got it. Yeah, it makes it easier there. Eighteen Three twenty-five. All right. I don't know if you guys caught all that. Altimeter is three zero four two, which is what Lee's setting up right now. Wind is two seven zero at six. So that's. Um, that's straight up tailwind, right? Yep. On what is theoretically uh, nine. If we look at the chart here, where's that at? Uh, Airports. Try. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Home. This is what we did last time, and you were making yeah. fun of me. Uh, so it's my turn. Um, where was it? This is your NDB procedure. Oh, okay. Do you um, want that dialed up? No, I wanted the one that says, um, what you call it? Sorry, I'm drawing a blank now. But there was one that said, you know, um, the airport chart? The, yeah, 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 maybe that was it. Yeah, here we go. Recommended runway 27 landing and 9 takeoff. So that's what I was trying to pull up there. All right, can you go back to our NDB? Or VOR, was it VOR? Oh, why did that happen? Oh, we got a fuel. Yeah, I, I see that. All right, here we go. ITEX 109.3 is in. Course should be 093. All right, and again, the runway is in sight. So field altitude is 9,070 feet, and we are currently at 11.5. We're still tracking four reds. Do, 
Oh, okay, so are you waiting to yeah. the three degree? And do you want to move us over? You can see where... Um, yeah, let's do that. Or to the, uh, to the right. Now that tailwind's going to increase our landing roll. Correct, yeah. And just as a FYI, that fuel, we might want to budget for or remember what we used for that fuel consumption yeah, and increase that. I thought I had given us a generous supply. I don't know that we can make it to a diversion right now. I'm not sure. Because we got about, what, four and five? So we got about nine gallons. Is that coming in now? Yep, starting to come in. All right, so we're looking at the uh, four. Those would be Pappy lights. Yeah, yeah. Want to kill the AP? All right, autopilot is disconnected. Do you want to toggle these off? I just like the screen. Sure, no, it's a good call. It just helps me feel like it's actually off. Um, your flaps are up here. Extend with the farthest top left. Okay. This is going to be... I don't know that I'm going to be able to left-hand land this, but I'm going to try. <laughs> well, so just for fun, I uh, switched my joystick configuration as a big thumb paddle, and I switched it to be left-handed. So that's a new adventure for Lee today. And Lee has already remembered that I have rudder pedals and is on those. Every once in a while, he's uh, on final, and I'm like, so uh, you going to use the rudder? <laughs> like, yeah, you going to oh, use oops. them? Yeah, why not? He doesn't have uh, rudder pedals at his house, so... Uh, the joystick twist does the rudder which actually there's a lot to be said for that because it you very intuitively can coordinate yeah so I'm I've got us now down into the wide arc I'm gonna go ahead and stick out one notch of flaps um, all right because that good. that tailwind it's um what, what sort of touchdown speed are we anticipating like 65 well I mean 70? bottom of the green is stall speed power off and then the bottom of the white arc is flaps so kind of that 50 area would probably be logical maybe all right for, for, for those um uh do we need to enrich in our mixture or anything um that's something we might want to consider um enriching it slightly you want me to do it uh yeah because i'm not trusting oh let me get this I'll say I wasn't seeing any. Um, oh, sorry. The localizer. That's okay. It doesn't really matter because of the offset. So you can feel free to do it if you can somehow leave me a little strip of visual reference there. Oh, no. I can. I can. Here. Okay. You're, you're max rich probably right now. Oh, you're watching it? Okay. No, I can't. I, I have a key. I just held it long enough. It went. Oh, gotcha. So that's about two and two, right? I was gaining some speed there. So I'm pulling power back and trimming. Um. No, we're still, to my eyes, we're still right of the runway. Correct, yeah. And we don't really have any crosswind. I don't know if you want to move us left now. I'm kind of worried about this. Oh, the and, terrain. Yeah, and if anything's going on over there. Because I think we've almost kind of got a quartering. Like, if you see how, how far we're off here. I'm going to go ahead and probably stick out that second notch and is that going to be final flaps or you're going to do uh that's two you're gonna uh, do one more yeah i may go uh full flaps just to all right three whites yeah now i'm high we'll go ahead and stick out the third one there and the cessnas you know with the high uh the high wing they kind of rotate nose down whereas a lot of airplanes like uh, with low wings tend to rotate nose up mm, right for uh, oh when you had flap uh just an interesting note to everyone the center of the field actually has the depression which is kind of a thing i've seen in articles that uh you know like it's high here it's high there it's very low in the center so um you definitely don't want to be floating and then get to the center of that runway. Yeah, for sure. Uh, who was it? Um, 
I can't remember his name. Well, I know his name. I can't remember his uh, YouTube uh, name that he was under when he was chatting with us. But he had mentioned this airport. Oh, oh, one uh, of our... Uh, yeah, a frequent commenter and subscriber, I think, on... I think he's on the X-Plane group. Is it Creamers? No. No, not Creamers. Tree guy? No. Tree fella? No, and not... Uh, uh, We've got a couple frequent chatters. Yeah. So this is really interesting. Oh. That was uh, pretty bumpy. Oops. No, what else we didn't do is uh, a checklist. Right. A checklist. What is that? Yeah, we were busy talking. I was busy left hand flying and concentrating. <laughs> that was a that was a unique experience. Um, I think. Well, that's quite a... Let's see what we missed. Seat belts, uh, that's fine. Yeah, Fuel we're... selector, bow, engine gauges, heading line, altimeters we did, radio we did, autopilot was off, mixture was rich, flaps were down, the approach speed, yeah. Well, sir, you did good from memory. After landing, lights except beacon. Way too clear. Is, is, that, is Alpha 3 there? Yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I, I hit it, but I don't think I hit him symmetrically. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Or perhaps I had more speed than I realized I had. Uh, okay. Oh, you know, and your power is still kind of still kinda up. That's still wonky? You're at like 1,500. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was trying to roll out a little bit, but... Uh, so where you've been to this airport, right, in real life, or was that no. Grand Teton? No, oh, I've okay. been to uh, Teton, but never okay. tell your ride. Okay. Oh, I'd say go park where the airplanes are. Uh, I'll allow it. Um, can see where's our rich, rich and rich and. Oh, you're rich. Oh, okay. Here. Maybe, maybe I'm too rich. Mixture actually. rich, mixture lean. Up, up is up, down is down. There we go. It was too rich. Do you want to track the? Do you want me to watch the line? Yeah, if you can. <laughs> like, hey, uh, while I'm driving this car, I want a view from the trunk. <laughs> I'm running the viewpoint for Lee at the moment because Ugh. trying to find useful co-piloty things to do um, right. on this aircraft, other than running the. Uh, you know, you know what I the find Garmin. these these pedals are like a uh, they're like a clutch in a car. I bet they're fine once you get used to how they respond. Oh, no, I agree. It but was very awkward when like, I first got it. Like I have no idea what's what's going on here. Can I can I park over to the right? Do we have a? Uh, that looks like a spot. Yeah, uh, these appear to be. I bet that's some gas pumps or something, right? I don't know. We're gonna park over here somewhere and call that one good. Hey, we've warmed up to zero degrees. Better put on your jacket. See, this is the uh, this is where maybe flights in 2020 will grant us some snow. I'm gonna park backwards on this. Some snow and some ski bunnies up here. That might be a welcome addition. The amount of power required here, I think, because it's uphill, it's actually uh, something also. It's good that we brought the Cessna because your Cherokee co-pilot was not appropriately dressed for zero degrees. No, she was not. Oh, uh, it's parking brake, period. Or that. There you go. Parking brake, check. Should we should we checklist since we neglected it earlier? Yeah, let me uh, let me lean a bit here. Okay, we'll go ahead and run this bad boy. Uh, throttle to idle. Check. Mags. I don't... I think this is where you're supposed to check ground, right? But I think it turns off. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Mags. We've got them. Yeah. Avionics. Off. Mixture. Master alternator. Check. Ignition. Ignition key. Put that on the glare shield. That way everyone can see that it's visible. Is that why they do it? No, I'm sure it's not. I don't know. Probably in a trainer where it's secured and everything. I mean... Alright. All right. Uh, Hobbs meter. Oh, crap. What was our uh, time? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hold on. 
battery. Did we lose it? Yeah, there you go. One hour, 43.44. Can you write that right here? 43.44. Okay. Oh, because so, eight, that was our takeoff time? Yeah, our takeoff was at eight, 18 minutes. Got it. Nice. All but right. Not that it really matters. Should stop that? Yeah, sure. Whatever. All right. Uh, we'll kill <laughs> like, the beat. Yeah, whatever. All right. All right. Get out. Let's get out. Um, all right. Reality expansion pack. We got to disconnect our battery. Well, are we? Uh, are we? I'm um, walking through the building. Are we going to continue today's adventure? You know what? Let's go ahead and run this out like we're ending it, and then we can turn around and continue it and see if we decide to record that. What All do you right. think? We'll see. Does that right, work? Maybe, maybe the next one will just do something fun. Yeah. True. Okay. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Fun. I mean, something stupid that should not really be done with an aircraft, but we'll, we'll see. Or we might just try and get the Cessna back out of here. Yeah. Who knows? With more gas because that was. That was pretty. It was pretty close. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, honestly, it was probably what a thirty-minute reserve, so it would have been kind of legal for I think VFR. So um, anyway, whatever. It's not a comforting feeling in these mountains to see the gas gauge down. Right, and I'm really not certain that we could have made it back. I don't know how right. bad the wind was. It didn't seem that bad. Yeah. But I wouldn't have been That's wanting right, to chug against it. Would have it. been a headwind mm -hmm. turning back. Yeah. All right. So as mentioned. Cessna 172 Reality Expansion Pack, because there's more to life than flying the Zebo, even though we love it, we just uh, we just aren't flying it that much anymore. So, as always, we're the uh, Flight Brothers. I'm Tim. And I'm Lee. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll... Plan the flight. And fly the fly plan, plan. And, and put extra fuel in. Right. 